world has gone insane. Cosplayers rule the conventions, gamers dominate the tabletop, and the internet. Sci-fi subjugates the movies, and fantasy rules the bookstore with an iron fist. Only one group can bring order to this unruly mob. A team of uber geeks, masters of the nerdly arts, trained for decades in the hobby shops and basements of the nation. Mobilized by the secret masters, they are the Department of Nerdly Affairs. Hello, operatives, and welcome to the Department of Nerdly Affairs. I'm your host, Rob Patterson, here with my co-host, Don Chisholm. Everybody, hi! Hi! No? Okay, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and tonight we are talking about Sentai. And to help us with the topic of Super Sentai, we've brought in a self-proclaimed Sentai and Power Rangers fanatic, Squall Charleston. Welcome to the show, Squall. Hey, how's it going? I'm actually going to steal that title from you, self-proclaimed Sentai... What did you say? Specialist? Yes. But, yeah, it works. Self-programmed Sentai and Power Rangers Specialist. Yeah, there we go. I'm going <laughs> to put that one on Twitter. <laughs> so, Squall, before we start, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, sure. Um, So I do a lot of online uh, tokusatsu-related stuff. So Super Sentai falls into the genre of tokusatsu, um, tokusatsu mm -hmm. including, you know, Anything from like Godzilla, Ultraman, Super Sentai, even Kamen Rider. Uh, so I do a lot of those types of videos on YouTube. Uh, most of my videos leaning towards the Sentai preference, just because a lot of my other friends that do some of the other stuff heavily lean towards Kamen Rider as that's more of the adult-oriented show. Mm. And I kind of like Super Sentai because it's a little more flashier. It's a lot easier to watch. But like at the end of the day, they're just 30-minute toy commercials. You know, it's have a preference here or there. I well, yeah, exactly. That. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's true. That's a good That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, well, th thank you for coming on and helping us out with this. I mean, as I was telling you before the show, and I'll be honest to the audience as well, that uh, my knowledge of Sentai mostly goes up until around the early 2000s. And uh, I saw that you were actually doing reviews of current Sentai, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah. So we got uh, season 42, Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. Um, so... I was doing a. I'm still kind of doing a podcast on it where we discuss each episode at the end of each month, um, and kind of wrap it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I have some other projects that I want to do around that too. Very cool. And so, yeah, you'll be able to help us with that too. Yes. All right. So, Don, tell mm -hmm. us what is Sentai. Wow, that's a interesting question. Um, from what I've seen. And mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm by no means a, a an expert on the uh, the Sentai stuff. I kind of go more towards the Metal Heroes sort of thing myself. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Sentai is is the easiest the easiest way to explain it to a, a North American right away is to just say Power Rangers. But that doesn't quite cover it. Um, Sentai is translated directly. It means like uh, it translates as team. It's more accurate to say it's like um like squad it's it's a military organization it's it's like a bunch of troops <laughs> for a specific purpose kind of thing well the sen and sentai the kanji for it is basically the sentai for war mm -hmm. and then the tai if i remember right is group or team so it literally would translate to battle team or battle squad or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. yeah and they uh unit take your pick mm -hmm. And that's what the shows are always about. It's about a uh, a team of uh, good looking Japanese youths from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. Ten Not bonus... always. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's true. Um, ten bonus points if anybody knows what that reference is from. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and, and um, there's a, a huge, huge, huge history mm -hmm. to uh, to Sentai. Forty years, in fact, give or take. Yeah, mm -hmm. at least. Because the, the, the very first one was a uh, Go Ranger, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and that, that was, was in 75. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, the fun... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, 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 no, go, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, and you guys can uh, can uh, back me up or correct me here. Um, Sentai, the or origins kind of start with Ultraman. Yes. Mm -hmm. That Ultraman came out. It was a big hit. And a lot of the other companies said, we want to do something just like that, but different enough that we're not going to get sued and that we can 
it, it'll be our own thing and then we can start our own market. And from that came, uh, what was it, 71, the original Common Rider. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Common Rider was a dude who has like an exoskeleton that gives him, was it the power of a grasshopper? Right. Yep. And it's, 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 it's a superhero story. It's something we in the West would recognize as a superhero story. Mm-hmm. Common Rider got popular and then Toei kind of wanted something similar. Mm-hmm. And they put out uh they put out Go Ranger and the shtick with that was it was a team. It's it's not just one one of these uh these I'm gonna just superheroes. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. again, I guess that they're, they're very recognizable in the West that they have the flashy costumes, they have the flashy powers. Mm-hmm. Um vehicles were a big part of it. Like the uh common riders always have a motorcycle. Right. And, and original... so did Go Ranger as well. Yeah. And then uh Go Ranger did, and then the second one was Jack, and Jack had all these like souped up nineteen seventies cars. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, well, hold on a sec. Let's back. Let's backtrack a tiny bit here. Okay? okay. So I, you're, you're. I think you're pretty much on for most of it, but I just wanted to add in a few t- small little details. Um, mm-hmm. One, the person behind Go Ranger was Sh- Shotaro Ishinomori, who yep. of course also created Kamen Rider, yeah, um, which he had a huge hit with, and they came to him and said, "Well, what can you do a team show?" Because remember. Ishinomori is also the guy who created Cyborg 009 as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so they said, okay, you, you, can you do a team show? And he said, yes, I think we can do that. And keep in mind, Go Ranger premiered in 75. And another show they called, you know, Gotcha Man had actually yes. premiered in 72 and was super mega popular. So it's yeah. not like he wasn't going into fertile ground to begin with. It wasn't really that much of a risk. Effectively, what he was doing is he was basically doing Gotcha Man live action. Is what mm-hmm. it really amounted to. Hmm. Not, yeah. not. I wouldn't call it a direct ripoff, but it's, it's definitely he's taking elements of his own stuff, the Common Rider and Cyborg 009, and he ta- and you know throw in some Gachaman. And in fact, I was actually just watching the first episode of Go Ranger earlier today. Mm-hmm. Do you know what the first ten minutes of Go Ranger is? Can I do, me? I do. Yeah, it's uh, oh. basically the entire military. Um, this organization gets dismantled by the villains and it's yep there, there's yep. nothing going on <laughs> there, there's literally yeah skull's right there's nothing going on it's because eagle is the name of the heroic good guy organization and they mm-hmm. have branches all over japan and the villains go for from to the five major different branches and kill everyone it's literally mm. watching the villains just slaughter <laughs> well not hundreds but at least tens of people like tens <laughs> of soldiers each at each location same wow. answer the same scenes. one from yeah, exactly. And then some, yeah, we're using the same stock footage in a lot of cases. <laughs> um, and then one person from each unit survives and they become the Go Ranger heroes. And it's so, so this death and mayhem is their background. But the thing is, yeah, it's incredibly, it's not bloody, but it's really violent to start with. You can kind of tell that it was originally meant to be a um, more. I won't call it mature, but general audience thing. It definitely wasn't really meant for kids exactly. It was just meant for a general audience. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely got, you know, it's kid elements to it. But then again, you know, even the original Common Rider can be a little bit gruesome sometimes too. And yeah. they definitely weren't afraid to do that. Well, it was kind of like, um, if you think about like over here in the West with Wolverine from X-Men, how he was mm. kidnapped and tortured and turned into this instrument for destruction. That's exactly yep. what Common Rider was. And... Yep. It had a lot more body horror elements where I feel mm. like Go Ranger was, this is my job. I am basically in my own, quote, military or army yep. and dying on the job is part of the job. So I feel like mm. a lot of the attention on the fact that it's this bloody, gruesome detail that all these people are being basically mowed mm. down by the villains uh, was just kind of like a normal, I think like a lesser extreme than someone getting kidnapped and tested yeah, yeah. on and turned into a monster. Which yep, I yeah. think is way more, way more darker. I think, but continue. Yeah, oh sorry. yeah, you know, no, definitely. And actually, just as a complete side note, you made me just suddenly realize something because in the 1970s, um, there was a local Japanese station in New York, okay, where Marvel mm-hmm. Comics was located, mm-hmm. and they were actually running Japanese cartoons and it, like uh, Cyborg 009. They were running shows like Common Rider and everything. And we know for a fact that the people who were working at Marvel, some of them, like Chris Claremont, who created, well, who was responsible for the new X-Men, 
actually were watching those shows. In fact, he's made mm-hmm. reference to them. So suddenly mm-hmm. I'm thinking, well, wait a sec, is Wolverine basically just a takeoff of Kamen Rider? Huh. <laughs> you, you, you might might be. I feel like there's a lot of like inspiration from that. Like, um, Just mm. another weird side note. The weirdest person that I've ever met that is like prolific in his career uh, that has watched Super Sentai is Joss Whedon. I got to talk with him during wow. uh, Cabin in the Woods, which is funny mm. because he mentioned a couple series that he watched like uh, the 2006 series, Bokanger. Um, mm-hmm. And it has this very iconic shot in episode two that's exactly what you see in the Avengers. And I was like, maybe it's not the same, but I'm like, you know, at <laughs> some point, like that exact mm-hmm. same shot happened in Bokanger like years before. Like, yep. Hmm. Huh, yeah. coincidence? Well, <laughs> let's just say there's a lot of inspiration going on all around. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of which, actually, this is that is in a fantastic segue, though. So, so Go Ranger comes out; it does really well. Um, yeah, they follow... eighty-four episodes. Yeah, hmm. exactly. Uh, people people loved it to pieces. Um, they thought it was fantastic, mm-hmm. and so it's followed by Jack, which didn't do quite as well. Um, Jack is basically kind of the same premise, except it was a little darker, a little grittier, at least for the first mm-hmm. half. Um, and people didn't quite like it as much, and so. At the same time, Toei, coincidentally enough, did a deal with Marvel Comics. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know the story of Toei's deal with Marvel Comics, Squall? I do, yeah. Uh, just to like, kind of like backtrack a little bit. I think the sure, reason cool. why Jack didn't work was because it so closely resembled um, Go Ranger, but it didn't mm. actually follow it. Whereas Kamen Rider had V3, which <laughs> in the Kamen Rider run introduced a secondary rider who's just identical to the main guy. And then right, V3 yeah. had the exact same story, but it like was the same timeline. Mm. And then the next seasons after that were completely vastly different. So it was like getting a whole different show, whereas it was Go Ranger 2.0, yeah, uh, yeah. but for worse, worse reasons. And that's why they canceled it. But um, yep. so anyway, yeah, Marvel, Marvel struck a deal with Toei to produce a live action show based upon one of their major properties, which was very huge in the 70s. And that was Spider-Man. Yep, or Supaidaman. Spider-Man! Fun we know, yeah, exactly. Um, and of course, the uh, Japanese Spider-Man, for those of you who aren't familiar, is just a tiny bit different. Just a mm. tiny bit. Um, <laughs> generally speaking, actually, Don, do you, know the, do you know the story of the Japanese Spider-Man? I know a little bit about it. I know the um, they, they kind of changed the story up, and the, the biggest difference a- was... was uh, was the uh, the giant robot they had? <laughs> yeah, Leo Pardon. Leo Pardon, yeah. of course. Uh, there, is there a little more to it than that? Um, he's like a a racer. Uh, mm-hmm. and he's basically he, common rider. <laughs> yeah, he's basically common rider. Yeah, he's common rider. Yeah, he's he's basically common rider. And then he gets he encounters a um, uh, alien from the planet Spider that yep. gives him the <laughs> powers of a spider and also gives him a giant robot to go with it and a spaceship <laughs> called Marveler as well naturally which, which of course is where he where he keeps his uh, giant robot and um then he uses it to fight where is it oh the iron cross army oh yeah, yeah. professor monster and the iron cross army so he fights he fight he fights them for he fights them because and he has vaguely spider-man powers but pretty much the only thing that's the same is he's wearing the spider-man suit pretty much mm-hmm. and he can stick to walls sort of <laughs> So it's got some good it's got some good action and everything in it. Um Marvel in fact even for a while I don't know if they still do on their website they actually had episodes of it just kind of as mm-hmm. an oddity for, for uh, was this like a to co- watch if you wanted to. Was this a couple of years ago? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. Uh I think the reason that they did that have you guys ever read the book Ready Player 1? Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, so Leo Pardon is actually a main part of the story that Wade gets this as sort of like a gift as a prize and no one else has mm. selected it, obviously, because it's so vague and obscure. But of course, right. me reading it, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> um, exactly. And uh, it's funny because in my mind, I was like, they're making a movie. There's no way in hell they're going to actually have Leo Pardon because that's so out there. But mm-hmm. then I started seeing like that on the site. And then I right. saw the Spider Verse. They had Japanese Spider Man with Leo Pardon in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he like ended one of the issues, and it was like, "What the? F-? Like, really? are you kidding me?" <laughs> yeah, he was in Spider Verse. They brought oh, wow. everybody together, and I was like, "Maybe it might actually be in the movie." And it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. Even Ultraman's not in the movie, which pissed me off. But whatever. Yeah. Mm. They, well, they <laughs> but they couldn't help it. There were legal reasons, apparently. They. Yeah. I, I right now I bet. Um, 
We'll see Super, the original. I bet, I bet Super Mario Productions is kicking themselves at the moment. Anyway, I mean, mm-hmm. Ready Player Two is coming out. They could do something there, but like <laughs> the spec script that I was sent because I auditioned for that and I like knew some people that were working on it, so they sent me uh, their mm-hmm. spec scripts. And all three of them, for the longest time, had the main villain instead of being Mecha Godzilla, which I was like, Warner Brothers has the property rights to Godzilla. Why aren't they doing this? Mm-hmm. They changed that from Mecha Godzilla to like this Voldemort Sauron combination, and it just uh-huh. baffled me. I was like, uh-huh. okay, I understand you're Warner Brothers, but like, just put in Mecha Godzilla. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, which they yeah. did. They yeah. finally did anyway. So that's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Wow. Um. Anyway, so. The the key point is though is that uh, Spider Man it ties in because of course it was the first time they included a giant robot in live action in one of these shows, mm-hmm. and even though uh, Leah Pardon isn't in the show all that much because they had budget issues among other things, um, mm-hmm. eventually um, it you know was a sensation. I mean it did fairly well the the toy I mean of Leah Pardon, and mm-hmm. it inspired them to include one in the next series which of course is battle fever j mm-hmm. well, and, well, didn't didn't mm-hmm. they uh didn't stan lee like basically combine ultraman which is where the giant robot came from you know with the tiny buildings right. and then common rider with the hero who can transform on the fly he combined mm-hmm. those two shows into what was the 78 spider-man mm-hmm. and then he basically was going through the annals of like all the other types of shows that they made and he looked at like Zubat and like all these other ones, but he saw Go mm. Ranger and he was like, "This," because he's very much, at least Marvel at the time too was very much in the mindset of like teamwork. And mm, then yeah. he was like, "Put a robot in the show. They all control a different robot that combines into one, and they become basically the ultimate team." And that's how we still have Super Sentai today. I have actually never later. heard that. I've never heard that version. I've oh, never heard really? The, yeah. That uh, Stanley was that involved with it? Wow. Okay. Yeah, it, it basically came down to him, and he was the one, he was basically the one that said, "Battle Fever J needs to be both something that extends beyond Japan, mm. which mm-hmm. all the characters in that show following were like Battle Japan, you know, like f- guy from France, Miss America, mm. you know, stuff like that. Um, and then, of course, to include this motif of the unified team together as one symbol right. of peace, which was their mm. their gatai." Right, and oh, okay, wow. that makes sense, actually, because in the original yeah. Battle Fever J, it takes them a while to get the robot. In fact, they mm-hmm. actually spend a whole bunch of episodes getting parts for the robot, like mm-hmm. you know, battling bad guys and recovering robot parts and everything, before they finally build the thing. It takes at least a couple episodes, anyway, before they finally get it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that actually makes sense, that they're putting that emphasis on like building it. I think it's one of the only Sentai series I, I know of, anyway, where they spend time actually building the robot and not just have it right at the beginning and that that was like kind of the problem that i think like i know we we're not going to talk about power rangers but the new power ranger (laughs) movie that came out Mm. i feel like what they did with the megazord in that movie was exactly what you should do that it doesn't just come together like if you look at like zordon's previous team like they failed to defeat rita because they couldn't work together as a team and he's like yeah we were all fighting but i don't know why we didn't win and then these guys all come together literally Mm, and are mm. able to stop her and i'm like yeah that's that's a megazord like yeah. it's not just handed to you like every season now um it's just like this is your zord you're gonna need to master it okay cool yep. now we're combining hmm. yep. so yeah actually i think i forgot to mention that okay we there we have nothing against power rangers it's just it's a whole big topic unto itself so we might refer to power rangers but we're not going to talk too much about it in this episode this is basically going to just mm-hmm. be focused on the sentai side of things so for, <laughs> for, the, for those of you who are for those of you who are Power Rangers fans, we're not dissing you. Okay, we're not. This is just not a Sentai yet. show. We will get to uh, we we will get to Power Rangers later in another episode, and we'll do a whole episode on Power Rangers. We promise. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> and we'll even invite Squall back for it, so he can help us with that one too. I may be able to snag us a former Ranger actor. I'm friends with a couple. Oh, wow. oh, oh, that sounds great too. All right, we'll talk. We can, we'll talk more after this. <laughs> okay, we can work with it. There's a, that. Now that's a teaser. Squall is a true professional. <laughs> it's all about the segways. It's all about the segways. <laughs> okay, so so anyway, so okay, so there we go. So we got Battle Fever J, and we have our first Mecha show, which of course begins the Super Sentai. Because for mm-hmm. those of you who don't know, Super Sentai is Sentai with a robot. That's basically what it means. Hmm. 
And so that's how you differentiate. Uh, that's how you differentiate Go Ranger, which of course is a Sentai series, from Battle Fever J, which is a Super Sentai series. All right. So after Battle Fever J, of course, we enter the eighties. Um, because at this point, uh, actually, yeah, Battle Fever J actually happens in 1979 to 1980. And at this mm -hmm. point, we enter the 80s Sentai period. Um, mm -hmm. So what do you know about 80s Sentai, Don? Uh, the main thing I know about 80s Sentai is a uh, Dynaman. What's nice. Dynaman? <laughs> well, what we had... Dynaman! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm thinking of the translated one that they did. Because we, mm -hmm. we found it by accident. We used to get Windsor in this area was kind of one of the, and we've mentioned it before, one of the dumping grounds where uh, a lot of product in Japan that ties in with a show or a comic, once the show or the comic is done, mm -hmm. uh, the company would take extra stock and they'd sell it to like warehouse stores that would then sell it out to like little shopping centers and family stores and that. Mm -hmm. And we got the odd weird bit of like a Sentai merchandise here, like when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. God, that's you, so lucky. <laughs> well, well, kind of, because it it wasn't anything. You'd get like um. It was all the of, the toys that they didn't buy, I guess. Yeah, and and we didn't have any context for them at, at that <laughs> point. Yeah. So right. you you get yeah you get these weird bright colored dudes. Um, we'd get model kits of giant robots every now and then. You'd actually get like say a coloring book or something show up, and we're like, okay. it's... It's kind of like Battle of the Planets, I guess, because we were kids. Mm -hmm. The very first actual Sentai we had here was um, they took the first two episodes of Dynaman and they dubbed them into English and they comedied them up. Oh, no. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. which, which um, it, it, it stuck with me. Later on, um, a lot of people know from uh, Night Flight, which was one of the... Uh, one of the super channels in the states, kind of like their late night comedy smorgasbord show. I think it was the USA Cable Network had Night Flight. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was, but they did a couple more episodes. So there's six episodes and a documentary mm -hmm. uh, about Dynaman, and those first two are some of the funniest things I've ever seen. And it really kind of stuck with me because it was this weird show with just crazy over the top action. Mm. This this giant robot, which is always a plus. And then mm. you have these like freaky looking monsters and and I I, I I was like I said, the first that first couple they did has absolutely burned itself into my brain. <laughs> well just because they are pretty funny, but and also by the way, dubbed in Toronto by mm. uh, a group of comedians who would later come to be known as the Canadian comedy group The Kids in the Hall. Oh, okay. At least the first two episodes were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know about the other four, but the first two are actually done by a bunch of members of the kids in the hall. It's funny how like how ahead of the curve like or curve Canada was with like a lot of these like dubbings and mm -hmm. like sort of translations of other media. Like you just mentioned Super Sentai, which I didn't know about, but like I know about like obviously like Dragon Ball Z. Like they mm -hmm. did their notorious better than the Funimation dubs, <laughs> you know, that people like seek out and like want right. that one instead. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a very simple reason for that. It's cheaper to dub stuff in Canada. We sound like Americans, but they can pay us 25% less. Oh. <laughs> it, mm. it really is that. And, and we've got talent up here. I mean, Toronto and Vancouver are both are the two halves of Hollywood North, as it's known up here. Mm -hmm. um, be because they film so many TV series. Like, there's a lot of American movies. Or, or should I, I should say, there's a lot of movies that are set in American cities that are actually filmed in Toronto occasionally mm. or occasionally Montreal or Vancouver and a lot of TV series are filmed up here as well again it's all about the tax credits and it's all about the the difference between the Canadian dollar and the American dollar and we're usually about 25 percent cheaper yeah gotcha. so so that's why including um Sailor Moon when it came out you're listening to a bunch of Canadians that was all dubbed in Canada um pretty actually all uh, Gundam Wing for those who were Gundam Wing fangs back in the 90s you're listening to a dub that was done, I believe, by Ocean Studios in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, it's It basically goes down the list. If you're listening to dubs, you're often listening to Canadian actors. Hmm. That's yeah. I knew something was up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but again, it's cause, just because we're cheap. Yeah, and, and, good, they've been, and good. And they've been doing that for years. I think going back into the 70s, there was a lot of the uh, Japanese stuff that got dubbed that mm -hmm. was done here for that reason. 
Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we also had the dub of uh, Ultra Seven. Yeah, okay, yeah. That was done for Turner Network Television back in the eighties. Yeah, it was the eighties. Uh, they did Ultra Seven, and it's dubbed, and it's it was dubbed in Mo- in Montreal. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so speaking, getting so getting back on track. So eighties Sentai. Okay, so I'm going to take over for a second here. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm it's a please, it's a host job. please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, because eighties Sentai is probably some of my favorite stuff. I mean, I like the '90s stuff too. We'll get to that in a bit. But some of the '80s stuff is really cool, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's because while they had a robot at this point, they and it was basically a toy commercial, as has been mentioned. The trick is, is that they were still they couldn't use the robot that much because it was expensive. So you, most shows only had one robot for the entire season. They didn't have multiple versions of it. It might be combined with parts, especially starting with I. Th- I think it's Dynaman, but it might be Goggle 5 that the robot is actually combined from different parts. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, different spaceships or whatever that they all fly together. Um, but the key point is, for the most part, they were still they were still ha- basically just guys in suits using martial arts to beat each other up. And that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty much what it was. They were kind of like these weird over-the-top martial arts dramas in a lot of ways. And that's one of the things I love about that time, mostly because... In order to overcome that, they and having almost no budget, they they had to be really creative. I mean, yes, almost every fight takes place in the same gravel pit or <laughs> uh, park or or um, where else? Refinery, refineries were popular it's, yeah. too. And... It's funny you're bringing this up. Actually, the next video I'm working on is all about the reused locations that they use on these shows, and a lot of them are actually like owned by the studio or connected, like basically outside the door to the studios. Wow. Yeah, they're probably part of the same Zaibatsu. I think the Zaibatsu were still around at that point, which is basically a corporate family. That's, mm-hmm. that's Kiretsu. The Zaibatsu. Kiretsu, sorry, Kiretsu. Yeah. Zaibatsu were, <laughs> sorry, I'm wrong. The Zaibatsu were the, pre- pre- were the predecessors. Then they got mm-hmm. broken up, and then they just reformed in, as the Kiretsu instead. Thanks, thanks mm-hmm. Mon. Um, but anyway, same corporate family, basically. And yeah. we will link to Squall's video in the show notes because you will definitely want to go check it out and see just how much mm. they reuse locations <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> Boy, yeah. do they ever. Anyway, but so because of that, they tried all sorts of like really weird stuff, um, some of which worked and some of which doesn't. Um, mm. Like um, a beautiful example of this is actually Bioman, if you get the chance. Bioman is actually mm. one of my favorite series, and I know I'm not alone because... The French absolutely went nuts for it. Um, and also, Bioman is the original series that they were going to turn into Power Rangers. Yes. Uh, mm. Because Haim Saban saw it and he thought, I can turn this into Power I can make this a hit. And so he... Now, there are different versions. I don't know what version you've heard, Squall. I heard that the, that he just dubbed over the original one and took it around and they weren't interested because it was dubbed. But I've also heard a version that, that he might have actually put in American actors as well. What have you heard? <laughs> Um, no, I de- I've definitely heard the dubbed one. The thing is, is that he saw it when mm. he was abroad, and it was a rerun. It wasn't necessarily on air live. Right. And so he saw that one, or he went back to that one because it was the cheapest one to purchase the rights to, I think. Ah, um, okay. Yep. And then Makes he sense. was shipping it around. But I, I I know, like, a couple people, like, a couple people tell the story that, like, it, was, um, it wasn't up to par, obviously, because... Mm. In Japan, their filming equipment was never really up to par until yeah. around like maybe like the mid two thousands and like teens mm-hmm. for two thousands. Right. Um, and then they started, of course, like doing like four K and red and everything, and like even Super Sentai mm-hmm. today is filmed on red cameras. Um, but like a lot of the footage, especially like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, did not look the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you could easily tell where that divide was, um, and I think that was sort of the main reason that made him. Uh, start looking at mm-hmm. the current season, which was Jetman, I believe. Mm, right. But and then as they started mm-hmm. developing and saying okay to that one, then he went with Ju Ranger because that had just finished. Right. And then and that's looked a little better. Yeah. It looked a lot more basic. I think is the the key mm. is mm. that anybody could be that. It didn't have any like specific designs, and of course it was dinosaurs. People aren't going to really be drawn to birds like bird <laughs> superheroes, and it's too much like Gatchaman. Mm-hmm. Which I think mm-hmm. America was familiar with too, yeah. right. um, so the dino- well, dinosaur mm-hmm. thing just kicked ass, and like I think that was kind of what really took it off. 
Well, oh. hadn't also, I mean, we're jumping ahead, but we'll, but hadn't uh, Jurassic Park also just come out recently when, when uh, Power Rangers first premiered? No, Power Rangers was in 93 and Jurassic Park was in 6, 96. Oh, really? Okay. Um, and uh, like, I, I don't, I don't know if there's any correlation between the two, but I know I that, it, but, yeah, uh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the original. Ah, uh, no, you are wrong, sir. Jurassic Uh-oh. Park is ninety three. Ninety three. Oh, okay. It's, it's the same year that Power Rangers premieres. Hmm. So they were basically right. They were. I just checked IMDb. They they were riding the Jurassic Park wave. I remember that. I thought that's oh. what was happening. Gotcha. Okay. So there 93. we go. Um. Yeah. So okay. they were riding the Jurassic Park wave, but. Uh, and it, okay, well, let's go back to the '80s stuff, and then we'll get to the '90s because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the '90s stuff. Okay. So anyway, so um, Bioman comes out, and it's super popular, especially in France. In fact, the Europeans go absolutely nuts for it, mm-hmm. and uh, even to this day, actually, it's like most French people's like favorite childhood memory if they were alive during that time is watching Bioman, which is actually Bioman's a really cool show. Um, if you get the chance to see it, the basic concept behind Bioman, well, it's the usual concept, really, um, but. <laughs> Is that a bio robo shows up from uh, Biostar, if I remember right, it's called, which is like this world that was, you know, alien world that was destroyed. So it shows up. It's the it's the giant robot. The robot itself is semi sentient, and it comes to Earth. When it comes to Earth, a whole bunch of people in Japan, of course, get showered with bio particles, and then the robot puts itself to sleep. Okay, and then. In modern, this is in ancient times, like old Japan, basically. Then in modern times, um, Doctor Man, and I'm not kidding, that's his name, Doctor Man, and his and his Mecha Gigan army show up. Um, he basically looks like a weird old Doctor Doom with like half his face like cyborged up and everything. And they basically show up, and so Biorobo wakes up and says, "Uh oh, I need I need soldiers, or I need people to pilot me." For whatever reason. So he basically has his robot sidekick, Peebo, who coincidentally enough is basically <laughs> Alpha 5 1.0. I go out and they, they, they gather descendants of the people who got showered with bioparticles, which are of course the five good looking young people from all walks of life. And they bring them all together and they, you know, they, they fight the bad guys. Surprise. Um, Bioman's <laughs> interesting for a couple different reasons. If you get the chance to see it, this is one reason I'd recommend is it's, to it, it has several interesting points. First, um, the it has a a sta- uh, the stable of bad guys is basically the same in every episode. Um, mm-hmm. They have like three main lieutenants, and then they have like seven sub lieutenants that are the, basically the quote unquote monsters of the week. But they don't kill them at the end of the sh- at the end of the episode. So you end up with this situation where there's actually relationships between all the bad guys. In fact, the bad guys are one of the best parts of the show, is watching the relationships between all of them. Um, in fact, there's a joke between how one of the lieutenants and one of the monsters have such a close bond that they're referred to as the first gay Sentai couple. <laughs> um, and if you watch them, it's actually maybe not a joke, but whatever. Okay, guys, that's okay. That's good. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Awesome. Um uh, but yeah, so if you see that's Monster and his, I can't remember what the other guy is called, but anyway. And so what happens is you get to know the bad guys, basically. And the other thing is, is uh, what happens is at the end of each episode is the they launch a mecha suit that the bad guy, the, that the lieutenant pilots for that episode. So the mecha suit is destroyed, but not the actual uh, character themselves, okay? Huh. Although the bad guys do eventually get whittled down, but they so you, they go through that, and also when the mecha fights happen, they do an interesting thing where almost all the mecha fights are done from a really low angle, and so they do it in such a way, and they I heard they they change the speeds of the camera, so the end result is the mecha actually have weight, like you're hmm. watching a fight where the mecha actually feel like giant big things bashing each other. Instead of a show where they're like doing flips and jumping all over the place and flying left, right, and center, they feel like really big, powerful robots beating the crap out of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Plus, the Biomen team is, is are actually pretty entertaining themselves, and uh, in general, the stories are pretty straightforward and no nonsense. The action is great, um, and yeah, in general, there's a reason why Bioman is actually considered by many to be one of the better, if not one of the best, of the '80s uh, Sentai is because they they kind of did everything right. It's just one of those shows where everything comes together really well. And mm-hmm. even if you're not a big fan, I would actually... Bioman's the one I would recommend out of the 80s. Okay. Um, 
the second one I would recommend, which I think actually is probably my what again one of my top favorites is Live Man. Yep, good mm. good choice. <laughs> yeah, and obviously you've seen Live Man Squall. Why do you like it? Uh, I think kind of one of the main reasons you pointed out is that you get to you get to understand the villains. Um, mm. the the main the main draw of it. Uh, and they basically hint at it and they like show it in the intro every episode is this group of friends betray mm-hmm. their other friends and they like kill a bunch of these dudes like they're all basically in an academy together to right. become um you know like these superhumans that like will go into space and like cultivate and like all this stuff mm-hmm. and like these friends basically choose the side of darkness and shoot down their friends to like get away from it all and like they come yep. back a year later with this army that they've inherited now because they've made this decision and they're going to conquer earth and they've turned themselves into monsters. Like you can literally see them like what they've like personified inside is now on the outside Mm. and the, the remaining friends who are still alive, who have this grudge and who are terrified to fight them are Mm -hmm. the ones that stand up against them. And they've actually been training this entire time to stop them when they would come back and they transform into live man at the very end of the episode. Yep. And if you've never seen like super sentai or power rangers, it is probably one of the coolest episodes to watch. Cause you don't know where it's going. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really, yeah. There's a lot of stuff happens in that first episode. And mm. I also live man is kind of dark. Like yeah. I would argue it's probably the darkest of the 80s sentai. I, I think easily. Yeah. Like there's that... episodes and other ones like Bioman has some pretty dark episodes. Mask yeah. Man had a bunch mm. of dark episodes, but Live Man is a dark series. It, mm. it is. It really is. I mean, it well, it starts with people dying in horrible ways, and they kind of <laughs> go. It goes from there, pretty much. Huh. Um, it's a, it's also uh, one of the more interesting ones to note too, because um, the only other season that mm-hmm. hasn't had five heroes. Um, Jock, you can kind of say five because they had the extra big one who would yeah, show yeah. up with this pimp cane. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but there was one other series in the, uh, in the beginning called Sun Vulcan, which had three yep. heroes and then, uh, kind of spoiler alert, one of the heroes dies, which is like unheard yep. of now. And then they mm-hmm. replace them. So technically they had four, but this one for the longest time has three heroes. Yeah. And then they add on a fourth and a fifth eventually before the show's over. Right. Um, yeah. Which is, which is, yeah, which is crazy when you think about it. Like, it's great pacing, and it would set the precedence mm. for later of having a team of five go to six. Yep, or exactly. in some of the recent ones, like, up to 13. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That would be Q-Ranger, right? Q-Ranger, yep. Oh, yeah, my okay. gosh. Too many. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, anyway, probably. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. All right. So, but, so, yeah. So, you know, Live Man is probably one of the most serious and one of the probably one of the best i would argue of the 80s sentai if you're going to watch any 80s sentai bioman and live man okay mm-hmm. those are those are the two shows you probably want to watch is there any other favorites of yours squall that you want to mention it's weird because i used to watch these in school mm-hmm. but um because i got i got into super sentai when i was in high school right and um i was watching recent stuff like i was watching like 2007 on mm-hmm. but then i found online intros of all of them from like the beginning to like right. present and mm-hmm. i would watch those because i had no other way of watching the show mm-hmm. and i would just like laugh and giggle because like especially in the 80s all of the intros have like the male characters doing something crazy like mm-hmm. one of them's like exploding <laughs> off a mountain or like jumping off of like a really high like place or like right doing some crazy stunt and then every time it shows like the female character it's like they're on a bike that's going five miles an hour and then they <laughs> stop it and they're like oh. <laughs> and I, I don't know i thought it was the funniest thing but like i, I still right. have that mentality whenever i've tried to watch these again i'm like oh yeah it's this goofy one um <laughs> but i have i have actually sat down with a couple friends and we did a drinking game um but we basically went through and we watched the first episode of every sentai um, oh wow and it took us an entire day to do it, but it was it was really cool. And at the time, it was like thirty five mm. episodes. So it was almost like an entire season, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, it would have been. Um, but mm. yeah, we just kind of made notes of any ones that we wanted to go back and watch. And of course, we watched Live Man, which was awesome. Well, of course, yeah, um, that definitely. 
Don, do you have any favorites of the 80s before we move on? Besides Dynaman, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was, again, like, um, at this point, we weren't exposed to too much. We got little bits and pieces. Um, mm. I got to say, one thing that I've always liked about um, a lot of the Japanese tokusatsu, mm. and the Sentai really kind of epitomized this, is I like the way that they do the model work, and I always love the way they frame things off. Mm-hmm. Like, I think one of the reasons why, because we've, we've talked about it here, how come uh, giant robots, giant monsters never quite took off here? I think it's because we never developed the technique of, of setting up interesting shots. Mm-hmm. And again, when you get to the Sentai on, on, on top of like the, because they always wanted to have weirder monsters than the last show, and I'm a yeah. big fan of that. Mm-hmm. And then w- when they did the action, especially when you got to the 80s, because the 80s seems to be where they've got the formula, they're mm. still kind of tweaking. They're doing a little experimenting, but they're working in to perfect the ideas they have. And one of the things they do is the action would just get crazier and crazier with each series. Yeah. It was yeah. really the, the shit in the wall sort of middle part of Sentai. Like anything that would mm. stick to that wall that yeah. they could throw, they kind of incorporated into the next season. Yep. Mm-hmm. Even even if it didn't work. And that's why I really like, like I'm mostly a more of a fan instead of the 80s of the 90s mm. because to me the 90s in japan were technically like the 80s um over there just because it was a little bit later for mm-hmm. them it kind of hit them like i i know there's the joke in how i met your mother like the 80s didn't hit canada till the 90s but that's actually right. true for a lot of places <laughs> yeah. um and so i feel like a lot of the aesthetic comes mm. through in the 90s and a lot of these like tried true things that they've practiced in the 80s series which may or may not have worked were developed and done much more sophisticatedly Mm. with style in the 90s and like that's why i love 90s because it's just full of nightmare fuel um (laughs) like there's there's so much good like monsters and stuff and it really kind of explores that angle that the 80s began to like prepare us for (laughs) Mm. okay well i think that's a great segue all right so so squall actually why don't you start talking about 90s sentai then what do you think of it uh, like I said, I think it's one of the most uh, underrated timelines mm. or time like right. time sections periods. in Sentai's history. Yeah, periods. Um, because you like the seventies. Obviously, it's a lot of it's a lot more methodical. Mm-hmm. Like there's a mm. lot more story that doesn't really mm. matter. Right. The eighties is a lot more like pizzazz and not a lot of mm-hmm. substance. Right. But I feel like the nineties really kind of like was like hold on, guys. After the first two. Um, five men had some good moments, which happened in uh, ninety. It was the first one, right? But the the second series that happened in the nineties was one that I think anybody who's ever looked into Sentai knows about. It's called Chojin Sentai Jetman. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and which, yep, go sorry. Oh no, yeah. I was just gonna say it's it's basically like I I consider in my mind an eighties Sentai because ev- it's like everything. Mm. That's good about the 80s, even though it happens in like 1991, I think is when it was started airing. Um, yeah. It just has all of the vibes, all of the characters, all the faux pas, and <clears throat> it has the substance. It has great characters. It has great depth. It mm. has good development. And then, of course, it has these villains that are just like an extension of the heroes. And like you kind of like at some point want to want to side mm. with them. Like they have mm. the one that black condor the black ranger in that show is constantly fighting he's like a robot humanoid right and they go back mm-hmm. and forth and like i remember watching that show and i was like i kind of want obviously i want the rangers to win but i'm like i kind of want this guy to win too like he's being like seduced into this and he's sort of like stuck and like if he mm-hmm. wins he basically gets his freedom and he can like you know go do other things with whatever his life is right and right. it was this bittersweet moment at the end of course <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh Right, right. No, no, I, I, I am absolutely with you on that. Jetman is a fantastic series. And I think that's a lot of that's due to Kieta Amamiya, I believe his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was basically, he was already a kind of science fiction film director and other things in Japan. And mm-hmm. then they brought this guy in who was already very creative and very skilled at doing low budget science fiction films. He did Zaram, and he did a couple others as well that I'm blanking on. But anyway, but he's actually a very, very creative and interesting guy. And so they brought him in to head Jetman, and he really gave it a unique voice and kind of brought everything together. I mean, yes, to some degree, you could argue that Jetman is kind of 
truly uh, another take on Gacha Man in a lot of ways. It is. Yeah. At least visually anyway. But it does have its own voice. It has its own style. And as you said, it has a good story going on with the interesting characters. I mean, great theme song. They also, Jetman was one of the ones I remember, one of the first ones I can remember, would have battles with monsters that were not city size and were not normal size but would have different sized monsters yeah mm-hmm. like they had the that, cup of noodles monster yeah that was like at least two feet taller than everyone else yeah hmm. they were actually playing with monsters that were different than the city stompers or the, or the little guys and that mm-hmm. actually really added to it and they city did stompers yeah Sorry. They, they, <laughs> yes so they did they did lots of weird things also also i was fortunate enough of course to see uh, or unfortunate as the case may be, I actually first saw a Jetman in an. In- Don's laughing because he knows what I'm about to say. Yeah. I first saw a Jetman as an Indonesian dub. Okay? Yeah, huh. it's an Indonesian English though. They dubbed it uh, in English uh, because sorta. it was it, sorta. Yeah, it yeah. was meant for. Um, I I read somewhere it was meant to to teach you know, Indonesian kids English, so they dubbed it into Indonesian English, which is kind of sounds roughly like Indian English a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it's really odd. <laughs> it's it's, it's mm. kind of funny. You can understand what they're saying, but it's just you. It has to be seen to be understood. It's almost as yeah. funny as the original Dynaman in a weird sort of way. But just because of how weird the English is and and how they speak and the way the way it comes across. Mm. Um, which yeah, the, I'm sorry, go Don. Oh, I was gonna say the best part of it was the uh, the guy who did the voice of the the leader of the bad guys. Mm. That he had this weird clenched jawed William Shatner esque delivery for all of his lines, because because the line that anybody who watches the Indonesian one has burnt into their brain from the first episode was "Get on your knees." <laughs> exactly. Oh. Um, which it's is not. I'm sorry, go. Oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Keta Amamiya too, by the way, because mm. um, if any listeners are like, who is that? That sounds familiar. He's the guy that worked on Common Rider Black. Perhaps yes, he was. the best Common Rider series at the time Absolutely. of that original run was Black and Black RX, which he did both of those. And I feel like Black Condor in uh Jetman is mm-hmm. basically that character, but like if he was put on a team, which I right. love the idea oh, of okay. I could see that. And I, I don't know what you're speaking of, uh Squall there Cayman Rider Black is the best Cayman Rider series of all time. <laughs> there is there, in no one, not the, no other Cayman Rider series. Okay. Actually, correct. Fies comes close, but, but, but Cayman Rider Black is the best one, at least of the pre two thousands anyways, and maybe of all time. Hey man, I got to meet, uh, Kiriyama who played Shotaro from double and just meeting him and him going, ah, Shotaro. <laughs> You're like, okay, yep. There's no better series than this one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, okay. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. But but so so Jetman. Uh, just for those who are wondering, Jetman. Basically, what happens is, and it's very. It starts. Uh, actually, here, Squall, you explain the story of Jetman. I'm trying. I'm trying to think how to put it together. So basically, um, this. It's again. It's a military group. So when we were talking mm. about Sentai, um, that was definitely Go Ranger was a military esque one, mm. and. They kind of go in and out, and this is sort of one of the last military yeah. quote ones, I'm going to say, until O-Ranger. Yeah, and then is, I think. from there, we haven't really had that as a thing anymore, which is fine by me. Um, mm-hmm. But Jetman basically was prepping these two qualified candidates to go into um, – to basically turn into these like superheroes, like these super warriors, mm-hmm. and they were – the red and the white ranger and like they were gonna like be good together and then of course they get attacked by the monster um Uh, we should note that they're doing this in a space station above the earth yes uh and also the red and the white ranger hopefuls are actually in love with one another they're Mm -hmm. uh a couple Mm -hmm. and the red ranger isn't able to save his betrothed and she gets lost into the vacuum of space and he releases the final he releases all four of these other things these things like gamma rays burdonic waves burdonic waves yes yep, yep. <laughs> that shine down onto earth and it hits four japanese civilians that they he then has to go around basically talking them into joining him and fighting the good fight yep um mm-hmm. and it's even revealed later that his uh 
his his girlfriend is part of the villains now, which is really cool. Well, so she's been brainwashed, but yeah, 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 um, birdwashed. Bird wash, that's a good way to put it. Um, so, yeah, and so basically, yeah, they, they, they're they civilians, so he has to turn them into the Jetman. And there's actually a whole lot of training that goes on with Jetman. That's mm-hmm. another uh, cool aspect of it, that they, they don't suddenly become great superheroes right from the beginning. They actually have to really work at it, and he has to really whip them into shape. Well, this is um, also the first series, too, where they had an overweight character portraying one of these main heroes. That's true. Ah, yeah. So true. that was that was very big for kids. I remember, um, like, I have, I have a couple Japanese friends that, like, say Jetman was their favorite because they or someone that they knew saw themselves as a hero from hmm. that series on. And I'm like, holy shit, that's awesome. Like, we look at, like, Black Panther today. Yeah, and, yeah. like, all of these young kids are growing up like believing that they can become black panther whereas mm-hmm. like when we were growing up we could be superman or batman and yeah. like even though it like obviously that's not going to happen it's still mm-hmm. that sort of mentality that you can aspire yeah. to great things even if you are of a different color or of a different right, yeah. body type or mm-hmm. are female you know like wonder woman all this stuff so that was mm-hmm. that was huge mm-hmm. and of course jetman was one of the first series to to have two females on the team that actually did something <laughs> um and oh. I, I say that in a way of like uh in past series in the 80s they may have two female characters um and one of them gets severely ignored or usually yeah or like yeah there's always one member on the team that usually doesn't get enough screen time and mm-hmm. it's always going to fall on one of those females but i feel in this show um obviously it's going to be the blue and the yellow ranger are kind of the ones that you know we don't talk mm-hmm. about as much but Again, that's a girl and a guy. Like, they're sharing the exact same amount of screen time. Yep. Um, but she actually had stuff to do and things to say, and she actually moved the plot along, which was really mm. cool. Mm, and yep. when you move into the next series, which was Jew Ranger, which yep. was the one that got turned into Power Rangers over here in the States and, yep. you know, worldwide, um, they went back to the formulaic of one female on the team, even though you're going to be like, wait a minute, Power Rangers had two girls. The, <laughs> yeah. the yellow... The Yellow Ranger in that team, in that show, was actually named Boy, which is even mm-hmm. funnier that they turned him into a female when they right. brought it over here. Yeah, um, yeah. But they did that, and, you know, a couple of other things that they did, they didn't see their numbers coming back, and that's why it didn't take them... I think it took them until O-Ranger to realize that they need more female rep- representation, and O-Ranger is when the numbers really started kind of piling back on. Mm. So, okay. Well, um, we can talk about that as well. Um, sure. So, but uh, but yep, you're right. So, and at this point, as you mentioned, uh, Zoo Ranger came out, and the the story of Zoo Ranger is not that different from um, the Power Rangers in a lot of ways. I mean, um, they're cavemen with attitude. Yeah, they're except they're cavemen <laughs> with attitude. That's that's worth it. Actually, Zoo Ranger is interesting though for a couple of reasons. That like, one, I think it was the first all magical sentai where everything in it is actually supposed to be magical not technological per se yeah i think so too yeah yeah because the whole point is is that yes uh, you're exactly right they're cavemen with attitudes they're a bunch of like ancient warriors that are brought back into modern day because uh bandora is her name Rita repulsa basically shows back is released and so they're the war the jew ranger warriors are in suspended animation it can be pro- sorry i should point out it can be pronounced jew ranger or it should technically be zoo ranger like there's actually there's a weird sound there that we're kind of skipping around. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, regardless, so they're they're we're in suspended animation. They're brought back to life in modern day, and so part of the series is them figuring out about modern society and everything, and also fighting Bandora. But one of the things I liked about Zoo Ranger is is that it's got a really weird fantasy horror vibe to it. I, you're, as you might have noticed, this is the, I kind of like that kind of stuff. <laughs> And so that's why I found Zoo Ranger, the original, actually fascinating. In fact, I actually like it a lot more than I like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. I would agree with you with that. But I, I think it's still a very weak Sentai Season 2. Mm, yeah, Even it's, it has its they, issues. I agree. They introduced a lot of new things, which, um, fun story, mm. in Jetman, they were actually going to introduce a sixth ranger. Right. But mm. because numbers were doing so well, they didn't have to rely on those gimmicks as much. Right. Yeah. And they actually flushed out some of the characters, and that's what kind of gave us um, Black Condor. Uh, a lot of his backstory was because of that decision. Right. And so they had that idea in the back of their pocket. And if, like, you watch Jetman, there's a lot of, like, stuff 
in the um in the intro that kind of alludes to there being another hero eventually um they saved that for Jew Ranger and that's why they brought in the very first sixth ranger which was uh Budai which yep. was a uh, Red Ranger's older brother he never knew he had who's also get this a mm-hmm. villain so right yeah that was that was pretty cool that was groundbreaking but again it didn't really do much to help the show out after like a couple episodes it kind of yeah. you know it was like okay cool gimmick well but that's why they killed burai off <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then it's like okay this gimmick's cool again exactly so they they realized that they're like he's in just in there for a story arc and then he's gone but of course that was a huge problem for power rangers because the green ranger was the most popular thing ever <laughs> Yep. So that's mm. why in the season following after Jew Ranger, so Jew Ranger came out, and mm-hmm. then while they were on the next season, which was go say Sentai Die Ranger, yep. that's when Power Rangers was being produced. So they actually sent uh, individuals over to Japan to basically live there for a month and just watch how they make the show and document it. And you can find mm. a lot of these tapes on YouTube um, mm-hmm. that show them like putting on the Megazord suits, how much they can actually do before they have to break, which is only like 30 seconds and then they right. have to like make sure the guy's like well lubricated and watered and like fed mm, um because right. it's a lot of work and oh, um yeah. so it's funny that the green ranger that dies in jew ranger has to technically die in mighty morphin because that's the source footage that they're using but mm-hmm. i'll say sentai die ranger also had a sixth ranger which was the white ranger which became tommy's new powers yep. um and why he looks so different compared to everybody else because it was a different karate themed sentai yeah um actually an extremely good one i i would argue i mean yeah i would argue that probably jetman and die ranger are the best two of the 90s sentai this is my personal take anyway Mm -hmm. and i would put die ranger in in, at least in my top five of all best sentai of all time um just because they really die ranger um Basically, the idea behind Die Ranger is there were these ancient clans that were at war with each other. And the bad guys are basically the clan that basically decide to merge with demons and take on like demon powers and such. And so they, of course, eventually come back. And our heroes are the last descendants of the, the, the good guy human clan that didn't merge with demons. And so they have to use the ancient Sentai powers and such to basically their kung fu powers to um fight against the their former uh clan people would be the best way to this I guess the dominatrix the, yeah the, the yeah the dominatrix <laughs> people yeah because because the, the main three bad guys from uh, from the enemy are all like dom up in full s&m leather gear which mm. is really funny um because i don't know how much you know about the the actors that portray these villains but um mm-hmm. in any given season especially today in sentai you can have a group of villains that are just all suits, like rubber suit mm-hmm. monsters that yep. are voiced over. Or you can even have um, actual characters, actual actors portraying these people. And for the longest time, I think it was from, I think, Ginga Man, which I love Ginga Man. We should talk about that in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, Ginga Man on, a lot of the female uh, characters, uh, uh, actors, actresses in those were actually AV stars. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Which is... <laughs> They're Japanese porn <laughs> actresses, and mm. I think that's – is that up until today? I mean uh, – I think I, the last season was Go Wanger, which was 2009. 2008. did that. Yeah. 2008 yeah, okay. to nine, yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. That would be – but yeah, there was this long string, and for some reason they would have an AV act. I guess that was for the dads who were watching or something. I, I don't, I, I don't <laughs> It's know. just tell the kids, you know, like this is what happens if you do porn. You're exactly. You're going to become a villain. You're going to have to yeah. fight these rangers every week. <laughs> yep. Exactly. It's a hassle. You know, in a year, you're going to die. <laughs> Don't do it. Exactly. Oh, there man, the rangers are, like, the sexually transmitted diseases. They constantly <laughs> fight them off, and they come in different colors and different styles. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Even, even Japan's PSAs are cooler than ours. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, oh, so anyway, but so, and Die Rangers got all, does have that connection with the whole, like, the good guys and the bad guys are basically again parts of these ancient clans that are actually connected with each other so there's some like family drama going on with it and everything and that die ranger in general is just like an amazing series i i highly recommend um but i i'm afraid that for the only other 90s one that i would possibly think personally that you know, i enjoyed myself would probably be mega ranger um okay. which i found is a now i know mega ranger is not one of the strongest series but 
it did it does actually have some interesting villains to it and mega ranger is probably the closest the japanese series got to a power ranger season yeah hmm. because mega ranger is about five teenagers with attitudes who are given super electronic uh, video game powers to fight the evil oh, what are they what are they called um but anyway but yeah video game themed villains basically for those of you who have seen it, this is what cut, turned into Power Rangers in space. But it's mm. it's very different. It, that's the great irony is they completely changed Mega Ranger into something that's Power Rangers in space. It's completely different. But the original one is just standard Power Rangers, mm-hmm. which mm. which I found very really ironic. It, it's um, funny that like they did that. I think Senta as sort of a nod to Saban's success over here. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then later on, they did another one that kind of had nods to uh, Power Rangers in general, which was um, Go Busters. Right. Uh, um, and then they completely skipped that one because they moved on to a new format. But uh, again, this isn't a Power Ranger podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, yeah, exactly. Well, so we, once, once we move we out did... of the 90s, we'll be good. Okay. So, what are, <laughs> so, so what are your 90s favorites then, Squall? Um, again, like, I love Jetman. Die Ranger so, was great. Obviously. I watched it. I love, like, the last episode uh, mm-hmm. The movie was really fun, too. It was really creepy. Again, nightmare fuel. Like, you have this guy that's taking over children, kidnapping children, and turning them into, like, a deck of cards just for his, like, amusement. It's like, this is disgusting. Yeah, um, yeah. Die Ranger gained horror vibe. But, yeah, some really creepy stuff there. Yeah. Kaku Ranger was amazing, though. Like, I love that they have, like, a narrator who's, like, mm-hmm. describing everything. And it just – it felt more like if I was watching a kid show, like, this is, like, the type of action I'd like. But Mega Ranger was mm. good. But my favorite 90s would have to be Ginga Man. Ah, interesting. Now, I'm going to say up front, I actually didn't care much for Ginga Man, but I've got a Mm. weird thing um, where I actually don't like the Rangers to have superpowers when they're not wearing their suits. I don't don't know why. That that bugs me. The idea that, Mm. okay, they're superheroes and they have powers and then they turn into, put on their suits and they have more powers. Like, why are they, wait, what? (laughs) I'm not a big fan of that. Yeah. I, I wasn't a big fan of their suits because they just look like Charlie Brown Rangers. But... Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's that There's that too. But, I mean, it's it's really good. Go-Go 5, of course, you can kind of technically consider a 90s. Well, it is. And... It's 90, 90, 2000, so yeah. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I like th- Those ones, like, that time, especially in Sentai, I think they were trying something different. So right. that's why you have these these heroes that have powers outside just yeah. because it also influences their everyday life. And yeah. then you go to the next season, which is Go-Go 5. So if people don't know, Ginga Man was like, they're a tribe of these warriors that are elected to become these new heroes to protect everybody and shit gets real. Um, and then Go-Go 5 is the exact opposite. They are the least yeah. powerful people and they're not fighting monsters. They're not saving you know, the city from destruction. They're mm. basically like these unit uh, operating like firefighters, paramedics that yeah. are saving people, which is everybody's question for like the last 20 some years is I see so many of these buildings explode. How many people are dying? How many people are still in mm. trouble when they're, mm. you know, like, ah, we defeated another monster, you know, staring at the sunset while behind them, like 20 buildings are still on fire. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Gogo five answered that. They, yeah, like, this is them going in and saving these people, which I was like, that's what Sentai is like. Mm. Hmm. It is, but to be honest, I got bored with Go Go Five. <laughs> I, I, you know, I watched like I say it's about the first boring, yeah. twenty episodes of it, and I just couldn't. I had the whole set on videotape. I couldn't get through it because, yeah. again, they just don't do that much with it. It's a really cool concept, and there's some good action in it and other things, but it just kind of peters out. And I just, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a little dull. Especially when you compare it with the what, what follows, which is the first Sentai of the uh, 2000s. And again, one of the best Sentai, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, which is, of course, Mirai Sentai Time Ranger. Yeah. Hmm. Um, which is which is a terrible title if you think about it, it like phonetically. Future Sentai Time Ranger. Future Sentai Time Ranger. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh. But again, remember, it was the year 2000. It's basically, it's their millennial Sentai, right? That's the whole mm-hmm. point. And they do... Well, th- there's the other irony, really. Okay, so actually here, Squall, why don't you tell us, what's Time Ranger about? So Time Ranger, I believe, takes place in the 30th century. Yep. Um, I-, I know it's very akin to the Power Ranger one that they created, too. But basically, um, heroes from the future 
get stranded in the past. So there's four of them. And then mm. they team up with a present day, everyday salary man to fight these, uh, fight these monsters that have been brought back from the future, right. which technology goes way beyond anything we have today. Um, mm. And I, I haven't, like, to be honest, I haven't seen Time Ranger just because no one has fan subbed it completely mm. that I found. Mm. And I was waiting for a specific group to get it done. And they canceled it a couple of years ago because Shout Factory has been releasing these on DVD. Right. And they eventually were going to make their way up to Time Ranger, which they just announced it, actually. Oh, um, really? Yeah, so that's the first one that I think I'm going to buy from Shout Factory. Because I've seen all the other ones that they've they've put out and i can't justify you know like the 50 dollar price tag on it um mm-hmm. until the, until this one i'm like yeah 50 bucks for time ranger let's do it you know yeah. um so i've yeah. only seen the first few episodes yeah me too as well i mean i've seen of course all of uh, power rangers time force which is what course, time yeah. ranger got adapted to which from what i understand is fairly similar they're not mm-hmm. it's not an exact adaptation but there are, there's a lot of similarities again time ranger is one of those ones where they kind of through everything plus the kitchen sink in there they're just like tossing all <laughs> kinds of crazy ideas and there's like a giant flying battleship and there's um you know mecha from the future the great the great irony is to what i know in tower rangers time force they actually do travel through time if i remember right a little bit yes whereas they go back to the past and like they go back to the past and, and that yeah whereas in actual in time ranger they don't actually time travel that there's no actual time travel except for them coming from the 30th century to modern day. Yeah. You know, it's really funny and why you've noticed this uptick in quality with Time Ranger. Mm. Do you know what else was going on in 2000? What? They brought back Kamen Rider. Oh, that's true. Ah. So Super Sentai and Kamen Rider were sort of a pairing where they would have a movie. Um, mm-hmm. So Black and Black RX was the last one, which is like an 87 or something. Right. Um, and then, of course, Amamiya did Jetman in 91 to 92. Right, and yeah. then from Die Ranger, Cocker Ranger, and I believe O Ranger, they had a movie pairing with a Common Rider just made for cinema. So you had Common Rider Z- uh, Zeto, you had Common Rider J, um, mm-hmm. and then you had, of course, Common Rider Sheen. <laughs> and mm. Um, mm. the fact of the matter was, is like Super Sentai was dying in that, that, eight, yeah. that late 90s, and that's why they were trying so many new things. And Gingaman and GoGo Five started getting the numbers up. They started figuring out the toy game, yeah. and that's why they had a renaissance with Time Ranger. Also, they were trying to outdo Common Rider, which came back that exact same year with Kuga. Yeah, yeah. But Kuga, yeah. I think, did a little bit better than Time Ranger just yeah. because of its more mature narrative tones. At um, that time, yeah, Common Rider mm-hmm. was more. Mat- it was. You could say that that Sentai at that point was for the say six to twelve year old set, and Common Rider is more of the eight to fourteen year old set. <laughs> like they're both for kids, but Common Rider is for slightly older kids at that point. <laughs> That's I should <laughs> emphasize that. Well, I mean, yeah, like in, in the Common Rider during those times, you would get blood in pretty much like every other episode. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then like usually with Sentai, you would only get it maybe at the end, yeah. maybe if you're lucky. Um, so it's it's weird too because Time Ranger is very good. It's a very good season from what I've told been told and what I've seen so far. Mm. Um, and Kuga's a very good season too. But the fact of the matter is, is like Kuga did really well, and so you can even see that reflected in the next series, which was the 25th anniversary of Gal Ranger mm. for Super Sentai. Um, sort of trying to copy Common Rider's tones. Yeah, mm. yeah. And it's kind of been it's kind of been a give and take since then. It, it pretty much was well, doing better. I'd, I'd have to check at what point there's a certain point where it became superhero time where comment where the common rider show and the Sunday show are actually shown in one hour block together. That was, I believe it's yep. Sunday mornings. That was 2006 <laughs> onward because Maji wow. Ranger was the last season filmed in four by three and right. Bokanger mm-hmm. in 2006 uh, was released in high definition. They actually filmed these on very good cameras um, mm-hmm. and then they went back because it cost so much money. Uh, but it was actually filmed in 16 by 9, and that's when I believe it officially joined for the block. Ah, mm. okay, there we go. All right, so, so now since we're to the 2000s and we're to your era, Squall, why don't you take over? So what are the best of uh, – what's the best of the 2000 era for Sentai? Oh, it, it, it's, it's crazy because, like, with the 80s, it's so much like, well, this is a good show. With mm. the 90s, it's like – well, this is a good show that I think multiple people would be able to enjoy for different reasons. 
Mm. But the thing about the 2000 to like 2010 here, this little chunk Mm -hmm. of time we're looking at is all of these shows are actually very good and Mm -hmm. very bad for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And it's really up to the person. So we have time Ranger, right? Which was very flashy, very Mm -hmm. fun, had great characters, but it didn't again, have a lot of that substance. It didn't have a lot of darker tones, sort of story arcs kind of ended just flatly. And that's what Mm. was changed for Gal Ranger, which was a Super Sentai anniversary season. So they were trying to rub it in Kamen Rider's face by Mm. having this whole season be like, look, we've been on the air for 25 years straight, bitch. Check this out. (laughs) We're going to, you know, like reference it every episode. And it was an animal themed one again. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, of course, you got Hurricaneer, which came after that, which was the second ninja themed one Mm. of Sentai. And... I, I I love Hurricane. I I mm. I think it's one of the most entertaining of Super Sentai. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying that I entertaining. Yeah, I I, I, did, I didn't get bored of it. Like mm. I get bored mm. with a lot of these shows, especially when I have to play catch up. Mm. Um, mm. Abba Ranger was very different. It was another dinosaur themed one. Yep. Um, but they kind of followed the same thing that Hurricane did with the three heroes, and then mm. having these other factions of heroes on the team um and that that one's good for what it is like it, it try again it tried to like throw a lot of stuff at the at the wall because that's what common rider was doing i think we had fives yeah. at this point and fives was just completely destroying everything on tv at that time um well, for with good reason yes <laughs> and then and then they came out with one of the best super sentai seasons of tokso sentai deca ranger which was a space detective police themed series hmm. yes um that has probably one of the coolest set of costumes mm-hmm. um True. has one of the greatest sets of characters and they cover a lot of things in the show that would later be represented in sentai again mm-hmm. and again it's sort of like it becomes like a staple of the show right. um so you have a five member team mm-hmm. that then gets a sixth ranger okay well that's been done before but mm. now we have these other people that also can turn into rangers, but they're not part of the team. Mm. It's just if shit gets real, you know, like, you know, their commander is going to t- transform, you know, to save everybody. You know, it's little right. little things like that, which became commonplace for Sentai. Um, right. And, you know, it's just, it also was the first series to introduce fully a uh, ending theme song that had a dance number to it. Oh. So um, in mm. the 90s for Sentai they notice that uh especially like when you get into like superhero time like they have a block of television mm-hmm. no matter what time the show was on there was stuff before it and after it and kids would just sit there like i guess you guys can probably remember like saturday morning cartoons mm-hmm. oh, you yeah. would sit there for like a couple hours and not do anything right right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so they released in the 90s these vhs's and these things that they would put on air to kind of after the show sometimes Mm-hmm. to get kids up and active and they were like a little calisthenic aerobic you know with the people from the show so kids would be like oh, oh yeah and those didn't right. do very well <laughs> nobody really <laughs> bought them uh yeah and kids i don't are lazy. know mm. yeah and, like i don't know who had the brilliant the absolutely brilliant idea but they have an opening uh theme to the show and then they have an ending theme that they started including um mm-hmm. more and more of and it fills time yeah. Ooh. Well, the thing was, is that someone was like, why not have a dance to this song that we have the heroes do? Because mm. kids are going to get up after sitting down for 20 minutes watching this to do the dance every week with their heroes. Um, mm. Even if it's only like two minutes, you know, the kids still like up and jumping and they got more and more sophisticated and complicated. Um, and like they, they still do them every now and then with Sentai, but it's just... It's, it's it was fascinating to see that sort of mentality at work. Like, mm. um, if we go back into over into Common Rider for a second, they had a show called Common Rider Wizard. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a pretty recent one where the main character was obsessed with eating donuts. It was right. just you know, it was just a thing, you know. And they realized that it became a problem because all these kids were like, "Mom, I want to go get some donuts." And so we were getting more obese children <laughs> from the <this> show. <laughs> And so they reformatted it, and the next um, the next season was all about fruit. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Kamen Rider. Oh, was it Gaim? Uh, Gaim. Yeah. Gaim. He where he's essentially Kamen Rider Orange. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so um, you have Deca Ranger, which introduces the dancing, and then Maji Ranger, which was um, a very special, a very special Super Sentai. It's all mm-hmm. about family, and again, mm-hmm. it's un- of course, as the name would suggest, a magical themed series. Um, but that also had that dancing theme to it. Yep. Um, and Maji Ranger was also like one of the first Sentais. Like Deca Ranger and Maji Ranger are great because they really mm-hmm. set the pace that Sentai, all of the good stuff out of Sentai comes from. Mm. Maji Ranger had this thing where these these group of five siblings have to work together to fight, mm-hmm. and the main villain is this opposing, intimidating figure like they always are. But mm-hmm. they defeat him in episode like fifteen, and they 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 win, and it's right. like it's like two months into the show and like shit's over, you know, <laughs> and like they have a whole episode where nothing's going on, <laughs> and then behind the <laughs> scenes more stuff is going on there's another villain faction that pops up and i think over the course of the show they had three or four different groups that they took down and -hmm. they had to overcome and it was like dragon ball z they had to continually rise to the occasion Mm -hmm. um and they were never quite done whereas in all these shows they defeat the main villain and everything's good i think jetman was maybe the closest that kind of came to that where they defeated the villain and everybody's cool and unscathed and then something terrible, just mundane happens, you know, during hmm. one of the characters trying to stop a robbery. It's like, holy shit, this is so real. Hmm. Um, and Maji Ranger kind of added that element in of, yeah, you guys will be able to defeat this dude if you really work together. But it's not going to take you a whole 50 episodes. But right. There's going to be more and more until you stop it at the source, which they eventually do. Hmm. Um, so... I'm not a big fan of Maji Ranger, but I understand its importance, which is different. Right. Um, and so that's something that will continue with Bokanger, which is the next one that follows. Yeah, Bokanger had uh Bokanger was the 30th anniversary mm-hmm. and it was an adventurer theme. So basically think of everybody as Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. And that's huh. Bokanger. Um but and Bokanger, Bokanger if I remember right also has like th- is it three different factions? I think it had up at 1.6. <laughs> yeah. In the intro, wow. the the best part, um, I, I I have a problem sometimes with like Super Sentai openings, mm-hmm. not the songs themselves, but the spoilers that they have. Right. But Bokanger did this really well, and Bokanger I kind of retroactively watched. Mm-hmm. So I watched um, Go Wander, which was the 2008 to 2009 series, and mm-hmm. the very first episode of that, it's like a it's like a car themed series. Right. Um, yeah has three main heroes that are all kind of idiots in their own respect. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And they have no they have no way that they're ever going to save the world together. And in the intro, it shows the fourth and the fifth hero. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. When did they show up? And then after the commercial break in the first episode, we're introduced to the Green Ranger, who's like a delivery boy, and the Black mm-hmm. Ranger, who's like a retired or like fired detective. And mm-hmm. he's like, I'm going to become a hero and I'm going to help these guys. I'm going to save the world. These guys suck ass. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? And they don't get their powers until episode two, where they're basically holding their other guys' powers for ransom. Right. But the, the opening like spoiled it. And I was like, what the hell? Bokanger did this really good job of including all of the enemy factions that are mm-hmm. current in the opening. So if there's like the three of them in this episode, and then at the end of that episode, the fourth one comes back like, oh, they didn't actually defeat them in the next episode. They're included back into the intro. Right. And I was like, this is brilliant. This is so cool. Huh. Like, And it, it helps you like remember, okay, okay, those guys are still around. Yeah, the dragon dude and the guy that looks like he's from the Ku Klux Klan or whatever. Right. Cool. They're still, they're still villaining it up. Um, but, uh, the, the season that followed after Bokanger and Bokanger has a lot of mixed reviews. Mm, <laughs> um, right. I like a lot about it, but I also understand why a lot of it sucks. Mm. Um, it's a very weak season. They don't right. focus really much on the characters, which mm. they focus too much on the villains, which I never thought would be a bad thing until I saw that show. But, mm. uh, hmm. The first Sentai I ever watched was actually the 2007 to 2008 Jukin Sentai Geki Ranger. Right. And like uh, 92's Dai Ranger, this is a martial arts driven mm-hmm. series where these main characters, which it's, it's a group of three, um, are training to unleash this inner 
spirit animal inside of everybody. And so like the right. ones inside of them, they can channel and harness this power. And the yellow and the blue ranger are um, these highly trained, you know, cadets that are like top mm-hmm. of their class. And they take on this jungle boy who happened to find like their, their like CEO or whatever in the, in the forest. He's like this jungle boy that grew up with these pandas that he would wrestle. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. And he, uh, he came into the group and he kind of wants to be one of them. And they're like, you can't be one of us. Like you have to like be able to do this, this and this. And he's just like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to do whatever I want. And so like, he kind of runs into battle and it's mm-hmm. one of the best like reveals of him to be a red ranger is like, he's fighting this villain and like this villain's like overpowering him and he doesn't really have the mindset that he wants to be a hero. He just wants to be strong and stop this guy. And Mm. the moment this monster picks up this little girl and he's going to kill this little girl in front of him. That's when he like realizes that he needs to become a hero and he Mm. transforms for the first time and his Jukin shines through and he transforms into the red Ranger and he's not the leader of the team, which Mm. I think this is one of the first series to really do this. Yellow Ranger, she was actually the leader of the team. Yeah. Hmm. Um, And so we we actually forgot to mention something, actually. If I remember right, I think Time Ranger is the first one where Pink is actually the leader of the team. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's something that would pop up again, as you've just pointed out. But but, uh, that was one of the big changes with Time Ranger is and Pink is actually the one in charge, not Red. Mm Mm-hmm. Because uh, Red in Time Ranger is this guy that they've picked up off the street that they need his help. Yeah, this random huh. random bum, little schlummer. Um, hmm. <laughs> but no, Geki Ranger is really good. Um, and again, it kind of goes back to that reinforcement of the mm. fifth and the fourth Ranger. They're completely different. But when the mm. show basically comes to its end, it's those three against the world, um, which is really cool. And they had a lot of... They had, a lo- they had a lot of fun with, I think, the costuming in that show, which is what right. I remember the most, because they had these these masters that were all part of this, like, this clan that yeah. taught the new heroes of the future, and they all got targeted by the main villain and turned into their animal spirits. So mm-hmm. the main, uh, like, mentor of the team is this giant cat with tiny little cat paws. Right, yeah. Um, Master Shifu. But then, like, you meet all these other ones. Like, there's, like... Uh, Batoli, <laughs> like he's like Bruce Lee, but like a bat version. Mm. Um, <laughs> just really smart stuff like that. And I, that was the first time I'd ever seen Super Sentai because I came right out of Power Rangers, mm-hmm. and I fell in love with it immediately. It was way cool. It was stylistic. It was violent, mm-hmm. and it the main villains of that show too really had like a passion for what they were trying to achieve, which. Yeah. I had never seen in Power Rangers before. It's like, okay, cool. Rita's just really angry for some reason. Uh, mm. <laughs> but but like Rio and uh, Melee, they had like this passion and this 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 goal. And mm-hmm. it wasn't necessarily bad, which was right. really cool. Um, and I was like, this show is never going to get better. And I was proven wrong consistently because mm. the one that was on air was Go Onger, which was the right. 2008 to 2009 Which, fun fact, this is Mm -hmm. getting a V-Cinema, which in Japan means a straight-to-DVD version. Um, But they're very very big. They're very popular. Uh, So saying straight-to-DVD makes it sound like it's stupid or dumb. But they're Mm. actually very successful over in Japan. Um, They're getting a V-Cinema 10 years later, which is the team as they are today. And they Mm. did this with Hurricaneger and Deca Ranger. They did a 10-year-later version. Um, But Goanger is... Like, it, it, I I feel like this may be the most underrated Sentai, and this is this is the one that if people who I'm trying to gauge if they would like Sentai, if they like anime and they like very goofy, memeable stuff, mm-hmm. this is the show to watch. It's these creatures called engines from the mm-hmm. engine world, where all of the inhabitants are cars. <laughs> uh, so think of like Disney's the cars. Um, mm-hmm. And they are fighting these villains who are trying to pollute their world. And they chase them off to the human world. And they're like, okay, cool. We saved the day. We're done. It's basically the show starts at the end of their season (laughs) fighting these guys and getting Mm -hmm. rid of them. But then they realize, like, we can't let the humans go through the same thing that we did. So those heroes travel to the human world. 
but they find out that they can't sustain themselves there. So they have to split themselves into body and soul. Mm -hmm. But before doing so, they find these three people who rose to the occasion and became heroes and decided to partner with them. Mm -hmm. And in order to cooperate with them to help save their planet and to use them as partners, they take their souls and they transform with them. And that's what becomes their protective armor is Mm -hmm. these souls Mm -hmm. of their partners. And then when they want to do the Megazords, they put the souls back into the body and they have 10 minutes to take the enemy down, which actually got really cool in the later series. But, um, it also has like the best introduction of the secondary heroes because uh, they come out of nowhere. I don't want to spoil it for you, but like it, it, it usually at the end of these episodes, you have a next time on and mm. you're like, okay, cool. I know exactly what's going to happen here. But this one came out of nowhere and I, I was shook. <laughs> mm. Oh, cool. But um, mm. the best, the best Super Sentai season, in my opinion, came after this though. And it was the last of the 2000, uh, early 2000 series. And that was mm-hmm. Samurai Sentai Shikanger. Right. And this mm-hmm. one, I didn't expect to like it as much as I thought it would, or I thought I would, because um, mm-hmm. it's a samurai-themed one, and it's very heavily influenced by Japanese culture. Yep. And I mm-hmm. was like, I don't know how this is going to work. Mm-hmm. And I was constantly reassured every week as I watched it live um that this that this understands what it's like to be a Sentai more than any of the teams that have come before. Hmm. And I I'm still like I'm still kinda on the fence about some of the other teams, but like in my mind, mm-hmm. the dynamic that She Kanger poses is unbeatable. You have really? you have this um if you guys are familiar with Japanese culture, mm-hmm. um the samurai were actually appointed warriors, basically like warriors for hire for like kings and monarchs or as they were called in Japan lords um mm-hmm. these very rich people or very noble people would hire these people as bodyguards um to protect them and so the main character in this show is a lord he's this descendant upon this great family line and he's been fighting this fight against what's known as the gidoshu are these monsters that come from the river sticks of tormented souls So they're Mm -hmm. people that have done wrong in life who have gained the ability for a second chance, but instead have turned their back on that instead of being revived, come back as monsters. Um, Hmm. And so he's fighting this fight all by himself. And his his uh, his mentor, G, tells him that he needs to bring these people together. And so he puts out the call to these people that have been training their entire lives. They're all teenagers. Um, So like you have Blue, who's like into super like he's like a theater guy he's super family driven and he's like been waiting for this his whole life you have pink who's like wants to be a mom so she understands the importance of all these fightings you have green who's um sort of a slacker who likes to Mm -hmm. hang out in the arcade and he doesn't really take this samurai stuff seriously until it starts getting real and Mm -hmm. then you have the yellow ranger kotaha who's actually a replacement for her sister so she hasn't gotten all the same training and she's the youngest on the team but her sister fell ill and so this whole season, she kind of in the back of her mind doesn't think she's good enough. And it's like mm. this dynamic is so wonderful. And in the second episode alone, they have this scene where they're fighting the monster and Red, who is the Lord, basically every time he enters the room, everyone bows to him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like he's the king. He's like the president. Right. Um, mm. Think of it like that. And he gets his ass kicked by this monster, gets thrown into a building and he's going to be attacked again and instead of like fighting the monster yellow and blue like try to jump in front of it to stop it from hitting him Mm -hmm. and yellow like detransforms and she's like you know bleeding and everything and like oh are you okay and like he gets up and he goes get up and fight and she's you know she's struggling and Mm -hmm. he's like if you can't fight you're useless to me you don't you don't need to be on the battle go home i don't need you and everyone on the team's like fuck you what the hell's your problem dude she's trying just as hard as everyone and he Mm -hmm. goes i don't need people to try hard i need people to be willing to die and to fight for this and they're like man screw this let's all go guys you know because they're all untransformed and he Mm -hmm. runs back into battle to fight this monster and they're like this dude's crazy this dude is psycho and in the middle of this fight he pushes the monster back and away from this like rubble and Mm -hmm. he pulls this little girl out from the rubble 
and he continues mm-hmm. fighting the monster. And he was never fighting the monster. He was saving the girl. And mm. they never saw that. And they like have this new resolve to become better. And the whole series is them trying to become a better team every episode. Which mm-hmm. a lot of these like Sentai seasons are just... Um, you know, like, they take their powers for granted. They're super powerful. They can do whatever. They may run into a problem, but they'll overcome it at the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. And some of these problems are, like, season-wide arcs. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It's I've I've still never seen a Sentai that has impacted me. And it, lit- it actually tell. made me yeah. cry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very well written. If you understand Japanese culture, mm-hmm. you'll see the huge twist. There's a huge twist in the show, and I don't want to spoil it for any viewers. Because I probably got them to want to go watch this. Um, <laughs> but there's a huge twist that I did not see coming. And it changes everything. And it just it made the show so immediately endearing and perfect. Hmm. Um, which I've never felt that way about a Super Sentai ending before. Um, but yeah, wow. and th- I think it was the best way to wrap up 2010. Okay, well, the 2010s, that was, okay, so we went from Time Ranger to Shinkenger. All right, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Which is funny, because it's, like, very future set stuff, and then Shinkenger right. is very, like, modern, old, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, hmm. the one thing I did notice, though, because I, was, I wasn't actively watching, but I was sampling, I was watching some, I've seen some of these, um, mm-hmm. is that, and this is the one problem I start to have once we hit the 2000s, this is the point where the a lot of the Sentai shows go from being about the characters and more character driven to being more progressively toy driven. Yes, and I think that that's and again I think some of that is actually also Kamen Rider influence as well because that was that happens with the Kamen Riders as they go along as well, mm-hmm. um, where it becomes variations of kids collecting stuff has it has mm. is now part of Sentai as well. So they, there's always plot lines about they have to collect what the cards or the gems or the whatevers. The and, gimmicks of the, the season. Yeah, the gimmick yeah. of the season. So, which of course they have to take time to explain, which means there's not really a lot of time for, I guess you could say, character stuff or drama. Not not that kids want heavy drama and I, I don't either. But there's still a lot, a lot of focus on the characters. It literally is, okay, count down till they merge the robots together. Okay, count down till <laughs> they take out the bad guy. Okay, they're done. Okay, it's a wrap. Let's go. No, that's literally like how I felt because a lot of the older, sh- uh, or like these, you know, 2000 Sentais would have the time clock up in the top corner of yeah. 7.30. Yep. And I was like, okay, it's 7.50. They're going to be rolling out the Megazords anytime now. Yep. Hmm. And like when it would hit 7.53, I'm like, oh shit, this is a two-parter. And I was always right. <laughs> yep. Because oh, <laughs> no. it's so formulaic. Yeah, to say they're formulaic is the understatement of the year. I mean, they're literally just the same thing over and over again. I mean, yes, there's there's some good variations, and obviously Shinkenger did manage to eke out some character stuff, but I think that's one of my problems with 21st Century Sentai is, and I, from what I've seen, it continues to get worse, not better, is that they just become progressively more and more just toy commercials. There they happen is, to have a story going on. There is one, however, that I think... Okay tricked everyone into thinking it was another version of this but then came away being a very deep impacting show which was um, tokyuger tokyuger interesting why um so i i get a lot of shit online for not liking gokaiger gokaiger right. being the 30th or no the 35th anniversary 35th, season yeah. of uh super sentai and the gimmick that they had in that was these ranger keys that they would transform mm. with and yep. they would turn into the previous former rangers in order to fight, yep. which was a very cool idea until you take into account that the tsunamis and hurricanes of 2011 mm-hmm. happened right at the beginning of the show's run. And mm-hmm. so every episode after that had a previous Sentai actor returning because they wanted to bring kids happiness. They wanted to you know, make these kids feel good. By right. having, you know, these previous people come back. And, of course, the parents would be like, oh, he's from, uh, you know, uh, 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 Dynaman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. But the problem with that is, like, none of the characters ever get developed so mm-hmm. bad enough that when the show ended after 51 episodes, they actually came back in the 40th anniversary, which was Juoger, which mm-hmm. is an, an animal-themed one. And they were the exact same characters as episode one. Like, that's how bad it was mm. on 
like not on the surface it was a fun flashy cool show mm. but it had nothing of substance right mm. yeah um, Gokaiju is just it's in theory it's a space pirate believe it or yeah. not sentai series which is a very cool idea but yeah. they just don't do anything with it well they never explain the toys the keys no. It's just these powers that were given up because all of the very first episode is epic. They have mm-hmm. all of these rangers come together for one final fight. So you get like 193 or four, you know, people in spandex just hauling ass at the enemy. And it's this like last, you know, ditch fight that ends with all of them giving up their powers. And then a year later, the Gokaiger is bringing them all back. And. Mm-hmm. The show just doesn't go anywhere, and it was because of the troubles that Japan had. Um, right. Like the movie was called the One Hundred Ninety Nine Hero Getter, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. with the Gokaijers included, all of the Rangers were at one hundred and ninety nine, and mm-hmm. that movie was supposed to introduce the sixth Ranger of the team, which was Guy, right. as the two hundredth official member. And it, the fun fact about him is that mm-hmm. he's. These these are these are aliens. These are space right. pirates that have no idea what the hell, uh, you know, Bioman is. They have no idea what Gao mm-hmm. Ranger is. They just use the power because they're like, "Hey, let's turn into that animal one." Yeah. Hmm. Um, and so when they introduce the sixth Ranger, he's an Earthling who's mm-hmm. in love with Super Sentai. He knows everything. He's a fanboy, and mm-hmm. so he starts to teach the team how to do all these powers and like he's Mm -hmm. the one that kind of unlocks their potential but he's like the only really good character that develops in that show and everyone else is just kind of a dick um (laughs) but like that that's kind of the problem that i have with like the two like the recent sentai like you have golf sager which came after Mm shikanger which was on paper a very cool and fun idea about these angels in training if you can put religious views aside Mm -hmm. think of it as a guardian angel Mm -hmm. They are assigned to watch over people and they are in training on earth when their, uh, (laughs) sort of their connection to heaven or wherever, wherever they go is destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so these five inept heroes are stuck on the planet trying to save it. (laughs) Right. Um, but it's, it's just a really God awful show. And everybody on that show (laughs) has like some sort of like defunction, like, there's some deformality to them. It's so right. awkward. Um, you have Gokaiger, which is just a very fun show, but it's got nothing to it. And then you have Go Busters, which is, it was so substance that it mm-hmm. did not do well, that nobody knew how to take it because it was a very dark series. Mm-hmm. It involved death. It involved a lot of like hard judgment and choices and sort of just like life as a whole, that it was so bad that they split the show in half. They ended, Mm -hmm. they ended the show halfway through and then started a new, a new arc halfway through the show with a new intro, which had never been done in Sentai before. Hmm. Um, And it it, it is, it's just so weird. And then by the end of the show, they kind of went back to the same arc that they had already finished because they're like, okay, fuck it. Let's just do this. This show is weird. Um, Let's at least end on a high note, which they definitely did. Mm. Uh, and then it's it's so weird. And then you go to the Koyuger, which was another, the third dinosaur-themed Sentai series mm-hmm. that is trying so hard to be substance, but it has nothing to it. Right. <laughs> it's so flashy. It's so fun, but it is so shallow. Mm-hmm. And this is another series I get made fun of so much for not liking, but... In this show, they had one of the coolest concepts. Can I can I like oh, map hey. this out for you? Mm-hmm, sure. Mm-hmm. So the Red Ranger, or his name's King. He's mm-hmm. going to become the Red Ranger. It's very obvious. If you don't watch the intro and know who the other characters are, you can just look at this guy and go like, oh, yeah, this guy's cocky. He's going to be the Red Ranger. Right. Um, and so he basically follows the main mentor of the group, and the mentor tells him, like, he has to, like – He has to bind with this uh, dinosaur. Like, in the very beginning of the episode, he defeats a Tyrannosaurus Rex. (laughs) Mm -hmm. As weird Hmm. as that is. Uh, The show had a lot of, like, problems because there's only one female on the team, which Mm -hmm. a lot of them have had, like, you know, two females for the most part. Right. 
the show got into a lot of trouble because the director was like, well, all of the heroes had to fight a dinosaur. I don't think any females could do that. And it's like, <laughs> I don't think any human could do that. Like, <laughs> shut the yeah. fuck up. Um, but they, mm. they later rectified that because this show went on to having like nine or ten heroes. It was right. the largest Sentai at the time um, mm. until mm. the one from last year. But uh, so he goes there. He kind of like pisses off a bunch of people. And then the monsters start attacking and he transforms and then the other four rangers show up and they've mm. all been grouped together, but he doesn't know who they are. And right. so they're fighting together and they all have problems and differences. And at the very end, they're all like, all right, you know, let's not reveal our identities to each other. And I was like, this is the <laughs> coolest idea ever. Of course, he untransforms and everyone's like, oh, it's this asshole. And then <laughs> I was like, this is going to be so mm. cool. They're not going to know who each other are until later in the show. And then the very next episode pink ranger and blue ranger know who he is and he knows who they are and i'm like okay this is done (laughs) and the whole show just like focuses on him everything Mm. in the show has to be about king 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 he even like at the very end of the show like makes the ultimate sacrifice but Mm -hmm. it's uh it's so stupid i hate it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if you think about it like where Ghost Sager comes in and it's very dark and it doesn't have a lot of like flash to it and mm-hmm. then Gokaiger was very flashy and then Go Busters was very dark and then Koyuger was very flashy it was very confusing to me because I was like oh they're doing a pattern because Tokyuger mm-hmm. came out and Tokyuger Resha Sentai Resha meaning train it was a train themed yes. season <laughs> and if you're if you've ever been to Japan this is like the only way for you to get around if you don't drive. And they're mm-hmm. so trains are everything in Japan. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the show is this is the most vibrant, basic Ranger suits I've ever seen, but I like them. And the show immediately does something that the show has never done before. Like in Gokaiger, mm-hmm. we had a female character taking a male character Ranger key And they actually made a female version of that suit for the actress to be in. Right. Um, So they, you know, they, they gender swapped a lot of stuff like that. But in Mm -hmm. Tokyuger, the whole gimmick isn't trains, it's imagination. Okay. Mm. And whatever these people can think of, they, that's how they fight. And so in the very first episode, these four Rangers end up finding this like guy who has no memory he later mm-hmm. finds out that none of the five have their memories um, and they team up with him and he transforms. And while he's fighting as the Red Ranger, mm-hmm. he they don't actually call themselves red or blue or pink or yellow or green. They call themselves one and two and three and four like train cars. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the cool thing is he in the middle of the fight goes over to the Blue Ranger and he's like, hey, let me try that. And he's like what and he takes his train out of his little wrist morpher and he throws him his red train and he immediately turns into the blue ranger mm-hmm. and they swap colors right so the whole show like in this very first episode the main red ranger becomes the pink ranger and the yellow ranger and the green ranger and they swap colors as a strategy mm-hmm. And I thought that was the coolest thing. Like, if they brought that over here for Power Rangers, like, kids would be swapping and trading the trains with one another. Like, it would be crazy cool because anybody could be any color. It's no longer, like, gender specific. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, this show's fun. It's cute. It's really weird. In episode three, they have – there was this huge fiasco where they get – imprisoned in a coffin and the way that they break out because their megazord is five trains lined up together Mm -hmm. the red ones being in the middle and his the long part of the red one folds up onto the chest um they break out of the coffin by extending the reds train outwards and it looks like a penis right (laughs) it caused a lot of problems (laughs) but so the okay okay yeah wow Okay, can I can I spoil just a little bit sure, of this show? Sure, go ahead. Because mm. I feel like if I do, people will want to see it. It's a very goofy show. So Go Onger, which was the, mm-hmm. the, the car-themed one, is very goofy, very anime-esque. These right. five people find out that they um, have lost their memory because the villains, every time the villains take over a city, everybody inside of it or ha- who has been to it loses their memory of it. And they find mm. this out by freeing one of the cities, and they're like, hey – I remember coming here when I was a kid for a field trip. And they're like, yeah, I do too. And so they find out that 
they have to find their hometown and save it before they can figure out what happened to them and what why they're mean, doing this fight. You mean Tokyo we're talking about now? Yes, Tokyo yes. Sorry, because you said Goanjur a second ago. Oh, so sorry. Like, no, don't no, want yeah. people to get confused. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. really weird. So they have to find hmm. their hometown and reconnect with their past and everything in order to actually go on to the future. And the big and like the reason why I was like this isn't going to be a dark series, but I was wrong. The, right. There's a twist halfway through the show where they meet because um, it's all on a train. They all like you know travel on trains from city to city. Right. Um, they meet the head, the head commissioner who's like a bunny rabbit guy, um, and he Ooh, reveals <laughs> no, <laughs> he reveals the secret to Red Rain to 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 the Red. Uh, his name's Wright. Um, mm-hmm that the reason why they don't have any memories from when they were kids to now as an adult is mm-hmm. because they never had memories in between that time. The only mm-hmm. way to fight back against the villains is with imagination and children can't fight. So he kidnapped these five kids before their town got taken over and turned them into adults to use them as pawns to fight back against the bad guys. And the the best part is at the towards the end of the show, they have to make the moral decision of do I keep fighting and potentially stay as an adult, Mm -hmm. as an adult that my parents and my family don't know me or recognize me as, or do I go back to being a kid? Mm. And it's it's amazing because it really splits the team and it's it's super good. And like. I I've shown it to a couple people who are like, oh, whatever, Tokyo. And once we hit that, like that middle mark threshold, they're invested. And I swear to God, everybody I've shown it to always cries at the last episode. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. okay. But no, it's, it's very good. And then considering the one that came after it, which was a ninja themed one again, yeah, nin- ninja, mm, terrible. Don't even, don't eat. We're not even going to talk about that one. Okay. And then, Juoger was the 40th anniversary, uh, mm-hmm. animal themed, very yep. cool. Uh, didn't really go much anywhere. Although some of the final episodes of that show were directed by the guy who's now doing the current season, mm-hmm. and he in that Juoger show uh, two years ago introduced GoPro footage. Okay. Which, hearing that, you're probably like, why would you have GoPro footage? Because it always looks bad, no matter uh-huh. what movie you or whatever you see it in. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is like he had it attached to the Rangers. So while the Rangers are jumping and flying around, you get to see what their point of view looks like. And it's like, oh, this is cool because they were like animals. So they could like jump and fly around. Um, And then Mm -hmm. flash forward to the one that's on today. It's called Lupin Ranger versus Pato Ranger. And it's a versus team of two different Sentai teams going one at another. uh, One, a thief, and then one, a police officer team. And... They have they brought that GoPro footage and that drone footage back in and they mm-hmm. choreograph the drones to fly in through the action and it hmm. is so it's so well done. Like hmm. it, you you kind of forgive it for looking janky sometimes, but it's it's so like when you think about like, okay, so this person just did a kick and the thing went through the gap of their legs over to this to where the other person can flip over the camera to fight them. Like the, like there's so much that goes into it. And I'm like, right. This is, this is good. (laughs) But yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So, but you skipped Q Ranger. Q Ranger. Yes. So this was from last year. Q standing for nine. uh, Nine. And that's how many Rangers started off in the show. Technically. Mm. Huh. So it was a space themed show mm-hmm. that had um the astrological signs as the main mm-hmm. uh sort of like identifier for the transformations and half of the team half of like the cast wasn't actually humans they mm-hmm. were portrayed by like people in suits uh yeah. sort of like the monsters but like good people of course mm, right yeah. um they're good it, monsters yeah yeah and it's the one Sentai that had, I think, up to 13 heroes by the end of it. And it just really got away from itself very fast. Hmm. Uh, the first few episodes are very good. The intro has this one shot where mm-hmm. all of them, all nine of them are standing side by side. 
and the view bay door opens and it, they see like the sun and they see like all of like the galaxy like spread out in front of them and mm-hmm. it cuts to a shot in front of them and they're all just like yeah and then it cuts to the logo and i'm like this is gonna be awesome and like 20 episodes in, i'm like this is terrible <laughs> Well, now, are they based on Earth, or are they traveling between different planets or something in that one? So, in that one, yeah, they were actually, they don't talk about Earth until, like, episode, like, seven or eight. Oh, wow. And then they actually, actually like, get fixated on Earth, and they don't really go anywhere else for the most part. And I'm like, God oh, okay. damn it! <laughs> you took the best hmm. part about this show, like, having in Koyujur having mm. nobody know their identities, and then you immediately throw that away by keeping them on Earth. Hmm. Oh. hmm. Again, a lot of lost potential. Um, wait, the one about no identities, isn't that Tokyuger? Oh, no, well, in Koyuger, the one before Tokyuger, yeah. they, in the first episode, they didn't know each other's oh, they didn't know identities. Each other. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, the, okay, the memory <laughs> thing came more than once. Okay, so is Q Ranger? Does it basically just suffer from too many characters? Is that the main problem with it? Yes. Is, so if you can, if you can, well, if you can imagine a five member team and mm. one of those members not getting enough love, right? Imagine a nine member team and five of those people not getting love, <laughs> and then and, they expand the team later on to include up to thirteen. Yeah, so it's kind of like a who's going to get pushed out, and mm-hmm. spoiler mm. alert: all the females do, but um. Mm. It, I don't know. It's it just wasn't fun at at a certain point too. Like that's the problem that I have with a lot of Sentai now, is right. either they're not fun as like an idea or a gimmick, or mm. they just don't do anything to redeem themselves. Which is why I really like the one that's on right now, mm-hmm. um, because Sentai back in the nineties, mm-hmm. again these were theatrical and sometimes V Cinema releases. They did what were called the versus movies. <laughs> Where right. they would take the current team that's on air, and then the returning team from the one that finished, you know, the year before, would yeah. come back for one more appearance, and they would fight the current team until they all got along eventually, and then work together. Mm-hmm. And they've been doing that since the '90s, and it's amazing that we are at a point now that the series itself has two, three Ranger teams that are fighting each other every episode. Hmm. Mm. So, uh, isn't that a little bit of a high concept, though, in some ways? The idea, of, okay, so there are thief rangers and there are cop rangers, and of course, there's also bad guys on top of that. And isn't that a little much for the like the kids to keep track of? Surprisingly, I I don't think so. Like they 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 very much make a line down the middle. Um, mm-hmm. At least with like Toku Twitter and a lot of people on Twitter, they take sides of who they like mm-hmm. more. Right. Um, I mean, it's it's six people. It, it's not right. more than a normal Sentai team, and I think so kids far. have been handling that. Yeah. Well, the thing about the, yeah. the problem that I have with it is there's mm-hmm. two teams, and it's sort of like the secondary team, the Pato Rangers, the police officers, are getting less screen time. And I knew this was going to be a problem going into mm-hmm. it, but they're the ones mm-hmm. that are kind of getting shafted by that. Instead of one character, it's an entire team is kind of getting right. the brunt force of that. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, that unfortunate. Okay, but it wow. does have it does boast one of the first things that has ever been happened in um, Tokyo or not Tokyo, uh, Tokusatsu history, mm-hmm. and it has an African American playing a main character. Huh. Yes, he, the angry police chief. You know, he's not angry, but like, yeah, he uh, he does get very stern. <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah. with, which of course is, but the, I found that funny actually because I watched one episode of it just in preparation for the show. Mm-hmm. I found that because, as you may or may not know, that's been the standard since like the nineteen seventies. Is that the hero always has the bl- the stern black police, mm-hmm. you know, captain who's like watching, you know, who's like hammer get in here, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and suddenly, and it's like, wow, they actually that's who the cops are in, you know. Uh, Lupin Ranger versus Pata Ranger. It's like okay, that's that's a little weird, but all right, sure. Huh. It's really weird because like from Koyujer, which was the 2012 series, mm-hmm. they had um up to like 10 or 11 whatever um Rangers. One of mm-hmm. them, the Cyan Ranger, was actually a Canadian actor who um does mm-hmm. not look like he would be a Ranger at all. I'm he's a little bit overweight. He's uh, a right. very he he very much looks like someone you would run into at like an anime convention. Um. Hmm. 
but he was a part of the show because he went over and lived in Japan for X amount of years. Right. And that's kind of the same with this guy that's playing Hilltop is he's actually yeah. very well known in Japan. And so having him on the show is like, hey, cool. Um, but another fun thing is like in mm-hmm. Knee Ninja from 2015, um, Yoshi Sudarso, who played the Dino Charge Power Ranger Blue, mm-hmm. was in Japan and he actually got to be in an episode of Knee Ninja. Right. So mm. he played a he played like a bystander that like the Blue Ranger of that show, which was like a nod to him as a Blue Ranger, uh, mm-hmm. was like, you're OK, get out of here. And he's like, oh, OK, yeah, yeah. And he ran away. Now, the funny thing is, is that Knee Ninja got adapted as the new Power Rangers Ninja Steel right now. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And his younger brother, uh, Peter, um, got cast as that Blue Ranger. So when you watch that episode again, it's like his brother saving his brother. <laughs> uh, nice. Fun little fun little fact there. A little factoid yeah, no, no. for you. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Huh. Okay, so poor Don's <laughs> been quiet in the background for a little while so there. Done. Yeah, well, that's okay. Well, that's okay. Like I say, this isn't my thing. I've been listening to this thinking, I got to see that. I got to see that. <laughs> um, the one that I find weird is when you mentioned, uh, was it uh, Gokaiger there, mm-hmm. how they were bringing back like the old like Ranger characters and that, mm-hmm. at, at least the suits. That kind of reminds me of uh, what happened with Ultraman in the 80s. Yeah. yeah that they decided they wanted to have it like one big continuity and the last couple of like the uh the original run ultraman shows would do these weird things with the ultra family or where other guys from other shows would kind of just show up at different points Mm -hmm. i wonder if they were trying to do uh to do something like that well it actually was taking um like we were saying back in the 2000s where it was kind of like common rider did something and then Mm. super sentai was like ah i'm gonna try that too um in Common Rider in the 2010, uh, they had a show called Common Rider Decade, which mm. was the 10th Heisei season. And the main character travels back in to these different parallel universes where these other Common Riders have existed. So, like, he fights alongside Kuga. He fights alongside Fies. Um, mm. And that was... That was that was kind of the show that they were going with. And so that's sort of what Gokaiger was trying to do in a sort of same and similar tone but yeah okay. totally ultraman definitely always gets there first <laughs> oh, oh yeah definitely uh, well he, he has the advantage he's been around since 63 he's he's he, mm-hmm. he's the grandfather mm-hmm. <laughs> um but i think with uh go kaiger it was simply about selling 200 power rangers action figures is what it was sorry sorry 200 oh. uh sentai action figures i mean you you've got all those rangers right and that, and you know you've even got variants of them like the female version of some of them too mm-hmm. yeah the, the, the well it was all about the ranger keys cuz that's what they use for their powers mm-hmm. and um there there's a big there's a big twist in the show which is actually really good where they introduce a character that knows the red ranger like they used to be partners mm-hmm. and these five have been using the main core uh team powers throughout the show Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like episode like 15 or 16, but then when red goes to fight this guy by himself, mm-hmm. um, this guy whips out all of these ranger keys he's never seen before. And they're all sixth rangers. Right. Huh. And so he summons these sixth rangers to fight the main character, the red ranger. <laughs> and it was like, Oh man, this, this show knows what it's doing, but it also knows exactly how to pace itself for the toys. But like, mm-hmm. I think Japan <laughs> shot itself in the foot because, they had some of them that are just like limited edition or they had some of them yeah. they had to buy in a box like that came mm. with like all of the teams. They right. should have had blind bags for these toys because they would have mm. sold like hotcakes mm. like 100 yeah. yen for like one ranger key. And there's a potential that you could get like a really rare one. Right. Hell yeah. yeah. Huh. Well, I'm sure there was out. probably some game or something that went along with the ranger keys as well. Well, actually, no, there there wasn't because um, Kamen Rider had the Gamba Rides they're arcade machines that you you play with real cards you basically right. put your cards in that you buy or you find or you get and um you power up the arcade character and fight and so mm-hmm. it's like you put in money and then like you can like beat the game or do some cooler stuff and win more cards but like mm-hmm. nothing happened with those ranger keys they were just for cosmetic like i had i have a bunch mm. of them mm-hmm. um because the power ranger ones are actually spring-loaded which are nice but they're very small right. <laughs> whereas 
the ones in the Sentai are the normal size, but they're not spring loaded, even though in the show they are. Mm -hmm. Um, but I used to just like wear like a bunch of them around my neck. Like I would like choose one for the day. (laughs) A lot of the ones that I wore was like battle fever J's, uh, battle Japan. Mm -hmm. That was the one that I wore the most because he's like mostly white. He's got a little red on it. Yeah. So (laughs) not bad. So then Squall, what do you think is, is the future then for, uh, Sentai? I don't, I, it's really like it's really hard to put a finger on it because there's just so much that they can do and they want to do. And Mm -hmm. you look at Kamen Rider right now, which is in a very good season. Uh, It's Mm -hmm. currently in a show called Build. Right. Um, And it's... So in the Japanese culture, uh, we are currently in what's known as the Heisei era, which is Mm -hmm. the Heisei uh, kingdom. Mm -hmm. The king, you know, he's like... Or whatever. He's got his thing emperor thank you um he basically is coming to the end of that line so the next one following it will be the new era for japan right. um mm-hmm. and so a lot of people are thinking like common rider how is it going to continue uh and super sentai is kind of on its last legs a little bit like these last mm-hmm. few shows have like haven't really like hit the mark um because mm-hmm. ninja tokyo missed the mark because it wasn't It wasn't upfront about what it was going to be and the people that stuck with it absolutely loved it i've i haven't talked to somebody everybody that says they hate tokyo i asked Mm -hmm. them how much they watch and i already know if they hated it they didn't get to a certain episode right and if they loved it they they got to that episode and they wanted to finish it um Hmm. ninja was just boring and had nothing good of value right to character or like continuation or anything and it didn't sell very many toys. They weren't. It was just kind of a poorly designed. Juoger, kind of the same thing. Like Juoger was the animal themed one, and it was all based upon cubes. Mm. And so mm. it just it is was really weird. So Q Ranger comes out, and Q Ranger is like, "Fuck yeah, we're gonna have nine heroes. This is gonna be intense. It's gonna be the craziest thing you've ever seen. Strap yourselves in, little kids." Um, mm-hmm. And you know, and it was that. It was uh, basically made in part with Bandai of America, mm. which uh, make the Power Ranger toys. Right. Mm-hmm. And so everybody, of course, was like, this is the one that they're going to adapt. But again, that's not the one they went with. And it's just, it's weird because like that show was doing so well at the beginning. And then it just immediately like turned into nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I'm kind of feeling the same way with the one that's on right now. But again, it keeps week after week proving me wrong you know it still Mm -hmm. has a little bit left uh steam in the engine um but like super sentai and kamen rider have moved time slots which is a big Mm -hmm. deal in japan um they're they're actually aired later now i believe right um because they used to be aired at 7 30 and 8 a.m and now i believe they're aired around like 9 a.m on a whole different channel too i again i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on this but um, mm. I know that they I know that they swapped times with the new seasons that started, um, so that's kind of an indicator that you know it's it, it's hard to like make these shows when you have so many other better things that are mm. doing the same thing but not pandering to the audience, mm. Mm. and that's the problem that I think Sentai and Power Rangers has is that they're very much trying to make the show for the demographic instead of making the show as they want it or as cool or as good as they want it. And then Mm. hoping that the demographic likes it like they have in the Mm. past. That's why like the 2000 to 2010 are such a golden era because Mm -hmm. they did, they didn't care. They didn't care what the kids wanted. They just did something crazy. And then they're like, okay, kids, what do you want? Okay. What do you want? Oh, you want some more dinosaurs? Here you go. Abba Ranger. Have fun, Timmy. And then you get to Koryuger, which is another dinosaur themed, and they're like, uh, uh, what, what, what do you want? What do you want? Dinosaurs? Okay, well, let's make some dinosaurs. <laughs> and, Just take it. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> and, like, they go from a dinosaur season to, like, a train one, which is completely new, and then they go to another mm. ninja season, because they're like, ninjas worked, right? What about right. animals? Okay, space. Let's just, let's just put it all, let's put it all on the line. So in some ways, you could almost say that uh, Lupin Ranger versus Powder Ranger is almost a desperation move. They really don't know what they need to do next, so they're just trying random stuff and just hoping that it works. 
yeah like you said the gimmicks of like the the 2000 present shows like there's always toy gimmicks mm. but like it doesn't help the show you need a show gimmick and that's what yeah. q ranger was here's a bunch of mm. people that's what lupin ranger versus pata ranger are here are two teams that are gonna constantly be fighting each other and i'm like okay cool i'm sold like mm. i sat my friend down to watch it who did not know anything about it and so mm. the show starts with like the lupin rangers the thieves transforming and being all cool and badass and this police this police patrol car shows up and he's watching it and he goes wait why are they all in primary colors too (laughs) (laughs) and he had no idea that they were going to transform at the end of the episode and like be the 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 resistance to this group Mm. and i don't know like i just it's so hard to put your finger on because common writer you're like okay they're going to do the exact same thing they've been doing they're just Mm going to be a different theme but mm. Sentai has like moved away from that. It's kind of evolved a little bit from that in sort of like a way to survive. Right. But uh hmm. now do you think that part of the reason Sentai is even still going is because they're able to then turn around and sell this stuff to America as and the world as Power Rangers, basically? Not really, because the thing about like when they sold Jew uh Jew Ranger mm-hmm. was when the show's done, it's done. Like if you mm. ever want to buy Super Sentai toys, wait till the show is like in its last couple weeks or the weeks of the next show because those new toys come in and kids don't care about it anymore. Um, well, actually, there's a catch, okay? Because I actually lived in Japan for a little bit. And mm-hmm. uh, one of the things they were doing, now this was back a long time ago, okay? This is not, this is in the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things they were doing back then is they were actually re-airing. They were actually airing Power Rangers episode as Power Rangers. Oh, and then dubbed they dubbed the it with the Japanese. Yeah, and, wow. and then and it was a way to basically double dip because mm-hmm. then you can bring the toys back again. You can sell them all all the same toys, but now they're Power Rangers toys. So it was mm. a way that they were doing. I don't know if they still do it, but for a while there, yeah, they were. Uh, so you'd have the the Sentai series, and then a couple years later, you'd have the Power Rangers version air as well. They did it with the two that I was very happy with, which was Deca Ranger, which mm-hmm. over here in America was SPD. Right, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. They brought SPD back over to Japan, had it dubbed by the original cast of Deca Ranger, mm-hmm. and oh, then yeah. they did the same thing with Maji Ranger, uh, which mm-hmm. was Mystic Force. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think they do it anymore because Power Rangers, to be honest, kind of sucks. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that people don't enjoy it. I think the one that kind of broke the cradle or broke mm-hmm. the back of everything was um, Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. So okay. I actually I have an I have a Japanese poster of Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. They released the volumes over there because everyone was like, they made a new Kamen Rider show off of one from 2002's footage right. in 2009. What? How does that mm-hmm. work? And mm-hmm. um everybody like people people were super excited for it and like i was like it's not very good and i had a friend who was in japan who was like i haven't seen it before and he like came back a couple days later and he's like that was the worst thing i've ever seen i'm like <laughs> it's bad yeah. it's really bad it is and pretty bad yeah i think that's what hmm. kind of killed off that sort of double dip mentality and there hasn't really been anything notably good because spd mm. was amazing mm. um it was and, actually yeah to bring it over is really easy. Yeah, okay. I can yeah. see that. So, Don, I have an odd question for you. What do you think is the actual appeal to Sentai? Why has it lasted 40 years? I'm getting the impression, like, listening to you guys talk, because you both have seen a lot more than I have, there's two big things that kind of kind of lend to its popularity and also cause problems. Mm-hmm. Is that... It's, it's again, like a lot of our superhero stuff here, it's very Mm action-oriented. That basically you come up with a clever shtick, and then it's just get right to get to the fight scene, get to the explosions. And you've got the thing that an audience member kind of knows what to expect. Mm -hmm. It's very formula, but you can tweak that formula to come up with new ideas. But the problem is... Because you've already set that standard, you have to be careful about if you go too far from what people are expecting, Mm. they're not going to be into it. But if you Mm -hmm. stick too close to what people are expecting, they're going to be bored with it. Mm. And it it sounds like maybe the newer ones 
um, because they're so focused more on merchandise than the story, they're afraid to add that extra little twist that kind of freshens things up and takes it in, to a new place because <laughs> they're more afraid that that'll cut into like overall sales, but it seems to hurt the story. So you kind of get stuff that's, it's okay, but it's not really impressing anybody and it's not really memorable. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Cause like Tokyo, i um, going back to that one. It's just like, mm -hmm. it's the most recent staple of like, this is how a show should be for this type of genre. Mm hmm took a very much common Rider approach uh, where common Rider is a very slow building show, but like people stick with it because it adapts and it evolves over the course of its 50 episode run. Mm -hmm. Whereas Sentai almost needs to be like at the first and foremost episode, tell you exactly what's going to be the whole show. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. again, it goes back to like the viewership and like the people who are watching Sentai are of younger age and younger mind. Mm. Um, and it also mm -hmm. has that negative stigma to it, too, where if you as an adult say that you go home and you watch Power Rangers, people are going to laugh at you, you know, because it's like, mm -hmm. oh, isn't that a kid show? Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same thing, whereas some people can kind of get away with Common Rider because it's like, yeah, it's an adult show and they have a Ish. better chance to stick with it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas Sentai, if it's mm -hmm. not good and you're trying to, like, justify it. Uh, mm -hmm. As an older fan or as an older person that's not, you know, just stuck in front of the television screen as a little kid, um, you know, you obviously have more things to do. You're going to be like, nah, pass. I'll mm -hmm. wait till next year. Yeah. Just... It, it also kind of seems to um, to compare it to the, the Common Rider. Common Rider had the advantage that they did series that were very kiddy. Mm -hmm. They did series that were a little more, I wouldn't necessarily say adult, but for say older kids or maybe even like teenagers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the Sentai stuff, apart from the original few series, tends to still try really hard to skew for a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that becomes part of the problem because once that idea that you're doing a kid show becomes ingrained, you get afraid to do anything challenging because right or wrong you think it's going to freak out or confuse the kiddies and then that'll cut into sales yeah well it's like i have i have a friend who had a youtube channel and he did tokusatsu toy reviews right mm -hmm. and then he decided to move on to another property which was not tokusatsu related it was an anime uh show that came out for kids and had a lot of toys that were sold over here and so he kind of transitioned his channel into that Mm -hmm. And it pissed off a lot of the people that were of the original mindset of Tokusatsu. And then he wanted to go back and he like was stuck in the middle and he lost both sides. So I feel mm, like yeah. it could kind of happen like that with Sentai 2 where they try to make it and appeal it to other people. But then you're going to alienate the people who are still technically watching it uh, because mom or dad's going to look over and see like, this isn't appropriate. That's nightmare fuel. You mm -hmm. can't. Little little Hitoshi can't watch that. Mm. Go outside. It's, fun <laughs> it's funny you mention that too, because that kind of ties in with, um, I think, a problem that uh, here, your your Marvel, your DC comic books have been having, mm. um, that because they catered so long specifically to the the comic shop crowd, mm -hmm. they've got that same problem. They want to bring in new fans. But if you go too far from what people are already used to and people are already act expecting, you lose the old crowd. Like they, they, they cry up a storm mm -hmm. and you don't want to lose that old crowd because there, there's not many left, but they're the things like keeping you on life support. Yeah. But you really do need to kind of do something radically different to get that new crowd in. And then you kind of end up stuck that you really can't do either. So you sort of have to kind of limp along until something happens that changes the game for you. Well, I feel like DC at least did it very well with uh, the new 52 and then into rebirth right now. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Marvel is like struggling in that comic department. Cause they have like rebooted their universe. Like what? Like four times in the past five years. Yep. Well, like, they, it's ridiculous. They, they got the problem because Marvel hasn't properly rebooted yeah. their universe. They have, but they don't call it that. They just sort of, they do what used to happen back in, say, the 70s. They changed everything and hope people would just kind of not notice and go with it. Yeah. Whereas DC makes a point of telling you, here's our completely brand new universe that's coming out. Mm -hmm. And 
somebody a couple years ago um, had crunched the numbers and they noticed what happens is for the comic books, Marvel and DC are just kind of swapping around the, the same readership. Mm -hmm. That when one of them will do their, their new big world changing thing, everybody sort of gravitates there for a bit. And then six months in or so, they kind of disperse back out between the two of them until the next guys do their big thing. Mm. I wonder yeah. if that's, I wonder if that's kind of uh, what happens with the, the common rider and the Sentai stuff. Uh, I, I still think it's a little more split too with the viewership and like mm. the ages, but I, well, hold on. I mean, I, I there's the ages, but we're still working with say yeah. six to 14 ultimately, or maybe even five to 14, whatever between because mm -hmm. they're shown as one block at this point mm -hmm. and i would argue that the common rider stuff even though it's skews slightly older has still been a little more kidified as it's gone i mean especially yeah. in, in the heisei era kuga mm -hmm. if you actually go back and watch it is almost again it harkens back to black and the other stuff which is a little has a little more of a creepy horror vibe to it and such and same with uh, agito has a real horror vibe going on with, yeah um ryuki actually no ryuki's got some really creepy stuff in the first episode of ryuki because i was a fan yeah um, every time they go into the mirror world it's got that weird creepy chime yeah that <laughs> chime no i'm thinking about the first episode where the woman's putting on her makeup and suddenly the giant spider thing comes out and grabs her like the yeah and pulls her into the mirror and is going around <laughs> doing that exactly and you're well, like see, holy <laughs> crap this is nightmare fuel as you referred to it and if we're gonna so, hop oh sorry sorry yep go oh i was gonna say if we're gonna hop in like in a common writer like getting more pacifist and like more kid friendly they mm -hmm. also were able to keep the other fans and the other adult fans happy be, by making a movie called common rider the first right which yeah. came out in 2005 and that was a like an adult version of what it would be like if the mm -hmm. fans of the old show made a movie today and it's super adult it's got nudity it's got blood it's awesome Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, also... I didn't think it did very well, did it? No, it did terribly. Uh, the sequel <laughs> did even worse. The sequel was like, okay, the first one's like an action film. It's right. like an action drama, sort mm -hmm. of like a love triangle thing. Mm -hmm. And then the sequel, The Kamen Rider The Next, is a horror film. <laughs> right. And huh. it, it doesn't make any sense, but I love it because it's so, it's awesome. That's all I, that's all I can say. <laughs> right. But anyway, but my point is, is that the, what's happened is Common Rider as well has become more toyrific. It's become more of a toy commercial as it's gone, especially, and it also has become more kiddified as it's gone as well. Like, mm -hmm. again, I'm not, I kind of bailed on Kamen Rider, I guess about Hibiki or so, but I've watched yeah. them a little bit. Actually, Den-O is, I think, the one that did it for Common Rider. We're, let's, again, we will finish soon. We won't talk too much about Kamen Rider. We'll save that for another episode. <laughs> But yeah, Kamen Rider Den O kind of introduced the idea of, well, we can have all the different, he can constantly be changing up his suit and everything so we can sell more action figures and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And well, it, it was just... the show that refused to die too because it kept yeah. coming back for other movies and it was just like, yeah. hey, there's Den O. Hey, yeah, buddy. exactly. It, it was super, super <laughs> popular. But anyway, mm -hmm. whatever. So, okay. So I think that, um, I think we've had a pretty good discussion about Sentai actually. Uh, mm. Thank you for coming on Squall. I mean, this has been yeah. a great time. Well, thanks for having yeah. me, guys. This has been fun. I uh, I normally get shushed eventually after <laughs> uh, like five minutes, let alone two hours. Like, so this is this is a rush to me. Like, oh no, <laughs> I, I mean, no, we we love having guests like you on who come on and are so enthusiastic and so passionate about their you know about their love of a topic and everything like that. Those yeah. are the best kind. Oh man, Super Sentai. Like, if if I can offer anything to your viewership that mm -hmm. uh, is like is this guy why is he talking so much about grown-ups and spandex yeah um it, it it really transcends that if you've never seen super sentai and you're only thinking about power rangers in mind or beetleborgs or the masked rider mm -hmm. um it, it it's it's got it's got very well-defined characters it's got very well-defined elements that you would see in like a marvel superhero film but it's you know episodic and it's mm. It's more goofy. It's more anime. It's like a live action anime is how I sell it to a lot of people. Right. Um, and I think that's the closest that I've come to like what it actually is. And it's like real live action anime. Mm. Right. No, so. I, I can, I can totally see that. So, so what uh, would you recommend our listeners go check out Squall? What shows do you think that our listeners should absolutely check out if they want to get into Sentai? Well, if they want something 
if they want something new that's good that'll just like hook them in i would say go kaiger i know i was kind of shitting on it but Mm. it's it's a very good show it's a very good basis and the thing is is that every episode introduces a previous team Mm. and they may find one that the design they gravitate towards or the theme they gravitate towards and then they can go from there um Tokyo Jr. obviously very good, very new, but it's again, it's a hard sell because you have to stick with it for like twenty or thirty episodes. That's um, a pretty hard sell. Mm-hmm. It's a very yeah, uh, but definitely uh, Go Kaiju is very good. Jetman is a very mm-hmm. good one. Um, and if you want to go back old school, I know you're really going for like Dynaman and Le- or uh, Dynaman and um, Bioman. <laughs> no, Bioman but... and Bioman. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. But Live Man is where it's at. Like that one. I would you'll, agree, actually. You'll feel angry for the characters, like, every every episode. And it's a good type of anger. Like, you can funnel it into something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Live... No, I agree with you, actually. Live Man's great. I mean, Bio Man works as a... It's a great martial arts, great action, great story. Mm-hmm. Like, Bio Man hits all the notes. It really does. But Live Man has the feels. Live Man is where... It, it's, much, it's much more visceral show out of the two of them. I totally agree with that. And if you want the coolest one, watch some Deca Ranger from two thousand five. Huh. That one's that one's fun. Okay, okay. It's very Sounds hard good. boiled. I, hmm. I think I would probably agree with most of those. Sweet. So, hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, uh, before we go, how can uh, people find out more about you and your uh, YouTube channel? So uh, it's pretty easy. It's just my name. I didn't go with any like code name or anything uh, on YouTube. So it's just Squall Charlson, which is just S Q U A L L C H A R L S O N. Um, on there, I do I do really weird, really weird videos. Like I do anything from vlogs where I go to Toys R Us and I like annoy people, or I uh, you know <laughs> talk about shows that are better than Power Rangers, or like how Common Rider was technically in the new Ready Player One movie, or uh, I just did a really fun special on Tokusatsu video games. So it's all video games. Hmm that were inspired by the tokusatsu genre like uh yeah. beautiful joe is an obvious one mm. so i go through the history of that which is uh which is really fun part two coming soon okay <laughs> fantastic all right so <laughs> definitely people go check that out um when you when you need a break from checking out sentai of course which is the thing you should be doing yes mm. <laughs> so any final thoughts don yeah now i'm wondering from the the last little bit of the discussion there how would you guys feel mm-hmm. if somebody did a series or a movie that was a dark, gritty, serious, more grown-up Sentai series? I would be okay with that. I um, mm-hmm. have you guys ever seen the show Danger Five? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would. I've I've always like fantasized about doing a Danger Five type show, but with Go Ranger footage. <laughs> um, I actually have a Go Ranger helmet, and I'm putting together an outfit right now for Power Morphicon, which is in Anaheim, California, later this year. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to be Aka Ranger for that. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and no one will know who you are. No, no, it's 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 the burden I, I take with me everywhere. Right. <laughs> But, well, I think that's inevitable, though. I mean, just as they did that Kelman Rider, the first, uh, we're eventually going to see a more dark and gritty take on Super Sentai. It's just almost inevitable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just as they kind of tried to jazz up Power Rangers franchise with the new Power Rangers movie that was last year. They're going to try to do something like that with Super Sentai. It's just a question of when, really. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And actually, maybe, you know, and maybe that actually be will be where Sentai goes. I mean, maybe they'll try something different where they'll say, okay, well, instead of doing like 52 episodes of this thing, we're only going to do half as many, but we're going to put a much bigger budget in and we're going to make it serialized or something. Or, we're, you know, there are some different takes they could actually do with this thing to try to make it work and kind of breathe some life back into it. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Because that could be cool. Anyway, so again, mm-hmm. thanks for coming on, Squall. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks for listening, Don, as Squall and I went on about uh, (laughs) Super Sentai. And thank you, audience, for listening. And uh, go out, check out some Sentai, and we will talk to you next time. Mm. Bye. Good night, all. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to hear more or join the conversation, come visit us at ObeyTheDNA.com. You can also find us on iTunes or whatever fine podcast site forgot to lock their back door. 
So until next time, remember that to master the nerdly arts takes time, practice, and enough Coca-Cola to drop a rhino. See ya!